maintain the plane. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports California Representative Kevin McCarthy, who had been under fire for comments on the Benghazi investigation, abruptly dropped his bid to become Speaker of the House on Thursday. It is unclear exactly why McCarthy, widely expected as the successor to outgoing House Speaker John Boehner, dropped out of the contest. He faced opposition in the nominating race on Thursday from House Oversight Committee Chairman Jason Chaffetz of Utah and Representative Daniel Webster of Florida. Representative Peter King of New York said McCarthy told Republicans Republicans in dropping out of the race, I'm not the one to unify the party. Representative Bill Huizinga of Michigan posted on Twitter, The room was stunned as McCarthy announced he is not the right one to lead the conference. At 8 a.m., he was at a forum making his pitch. Last week, McCarthy, the current number two in House leadership, made comments on Fox News suggesting that the House Select Committee on Benghazi was targeting Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. On Wednesday, Representative Alan Grayson filed an ethics complaint against McCarthy. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports South Carolina's governor warned on Thursday that several coastal areas were about to be hit by a second round of major flooding, while residents inland hauled soaked furniture and appliances from homes left in ruins by unprecedented rainfall. Governor Nikki Haley said the inundation expected in Georgetown, home to about 9,000 people, would last up to 12 days, and she urged residents to heed evacuation notices. She told a news conference in Somerville, don't underestimate the power of water. Officials on Thursday Day said 17 people have died after historic rains in the southeastern state, including 11 drownings and six traffic fatalities. The resulting floods caused 14 dam failures and at least $300 million in crop losses. Haley called the damage tragic, with roads destroyed, homes deluged, and farms left unrecognizable by the huge volume of water. Nearly two dozen caskets were disinterred by floodwaters in cemeteries. In Charleston County, emergency management officials told residents living near the Edisto and Santee rivers to monitor water levels as those bodies of water threatened to flood. In Colombia, where 11 inches of rain fell over the weekend, residents in the neighborhood ravaged by the first wave of flooding donned gloves and masks as they started clearing their homes of ruined possessions. Streets in the Lake Catherine community were lined with mud-soaked mattresses, soggy tables, and rolled up carpets. Dead fish could be seen among the debris. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's the Onion Radio News. Starbucks begins its sinister phase two of operation. This is Doyle Redland reporting. After a decade of aggressive expansion throughout North America and abroad, Starbucks suddenly and unexpectedly closed its 56,423 worldwide locations today to prepare for what insiders call phase two of the company's long-range plan. Cynthia Valcamp, Starbucks head of marketing, made this brief statement at a press conference earlier. Earlier today. We have enjoyed furnishing you with coffee-related beverages and are excited about the important role you play in our future plans. Existing Starbucks franchises across the nation have been shuttered with high-strength titanium, and the well-known Starbucks logo has been slightly altered to present the familiar mermaid figure as a cyclopean mermaid whose all-seeing eye forms the apex of a world-spanning pyramid. Royal Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can join us here on the Radio Waves to bring up whatever it is you want to talk about. Of course, we bring things to talk about as well. The We Tonight includes me, Ian. 
and Friar Rich. Yes, Rich Paul joining me here. Our uh, toll-free number, we'll give that to you. Also, our Skype as well. And got some stuff that I think will be up your alley, Rich, considering that you are uh, the founder of the 420 Foundation, correct? It's true. Uh, which is does what? What is the goal, the uh, the purpose of the 420 Foundation? Uh, the purpose of the 420 Foundation is to completely repeal uh, marijuana prohibition, uh, including uh, getting pretty much getting it out of the criminal code um, and getting it out of the tax code. A worthy goal. And now is that something that is a New Hampshire focused? Because that seems to be where it is most active. Or is it something you want to take nationwide or what? Well, we do focus on New Hampshire, but I would love to, uh, if there are people wanting to do, we've mostly been working through civil disobedience um, because there's all, there were already a couple of organizations, Normal and the Marijuana Policy Project, doing kind of mainstream advocacy. Mm-hmm. So if people are interested in doing, uh, in doing this in other cities, uh, we had a lot of fun with it in Keene, so I would love to. I'd love to hear from people and have them start doing uh, smokeouts elsewhere. But it's mostly been focused in New Hampshire. It's a uh, ministry of the Church of the, of the Invisible Hand, which is kind of a New Hampshire thing, mm-hmm. uh, mostly. Although we do have a Bishop of Ohio. Hey, Virgil. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, th- I figured we'd start off with this story here uh, by Ring of Fire Radio, which is kind of a lefty. Uh, talk radio show, but that this is where the news is coming from. Uh, an anti-marijuana New York assemblyman has been arrested for marijuana possession after an officer stopped him for a traffic violation. New York State Assemblyman Stephen M. Katz, a Republican from Mohegan Lake, was pulled over for speeding when a police officer found a small bag of marijuana on Thursday. Katz was arrested with unlawful possession of marijuana punishable by a fine of up to $100. And New York has seen some decriminalization, I believe. I don't remember mm-hmm. when it went into effect there, uh, but you know, a $100 fine for a bag of marijuana is definitely decriminalized compared to like what mm-hmm. it is here in, in New Hampshire where you, you've got a misdemeanor charge for almost any amount. Yeah, uh, yeah that, well, that could be either decriminalization or it could be um, or it could just be penalty reduction. Which What's the is, difference? Uh, penalty reduction, you're reducing the penalty, but it would remain uh, a misdemeanor on your record. Oh, I see. Uh, if it was completely decriminalized, then it would become, uh, in, in New Hampshire, they call them violations. Yep. And in Michigan, they call them civil infractions. And so, those are things like traffic tickets, which are not crimes per se, but um, the... Uh, like, They're not criminal code. Yeah, crimes. if you They're have not... a speeding ticket, it's not considered a criminal yeah. record. It's it's considered a, a civil infraction. So uh, so here you go. So that's interesting. I, I never really thought of it that way. I just figured any reduction in criminal penalty, even if it was just a fine reduction, would be considered decriminalization. You're saying it's only decrim if it reduces from a class to a different class, so from felony to misdemeanor or misdemeanor to uh, to violation, because I would consider it decrim if you take mm-hmm. a felony charge. Like they tried here in, in New Hampshire recently, there was a very successful, at least at the House level, decrim bill that took down the penalties for like large possession of marijuana, like pounds and pounds of it, that uh, tried to take it down from, uh, I don't know, like 15 years to seven or something like that. I mm-hmm. consider that to be decrim. You're saying that's only a penalty reduction. Yeah. Um. I mean, you could call it decriminalization. Well, Back in the day, it was generally more specific, mm-hmm. and so they were they were literally talking about moving it from the criminal code to the civil code. But then again, they've they've coined the term overcriminalization, and so uh, which which talks about you know making things criminal that should not be criminal, but it also talks about having too harsh uh, penalties in America, which is. You know, one of the reasons that we have the highest prison population in the, in the world is in some cases we have some extraordinary mandatory minimums that are just Outrageous. insane. Um, so, you know, to the extent that that's overcriminalization, then I guess you could say that uh, that reducing the penalties 
uh, could be considered partial de decriminalization. I guess you True. could use it in either sense now. So you got penalty reduction, decriminalization, legalization, and then repeal the prohibition, which is the the golden uh, chalice, <laughs> the uh, the ultimate destination for those of us who love the ideas of freedom and want to see the war on drugs end. You know, mm -hmm. I think I think I think I can speak for you on this one, Rich. We don't want to see the government having control of cannabis or any other drug at all, right? Uh, no. And basically, once once you get to the point where if you if you want to say you need it for medical or for spiritual purposes, you can have it, uh, and you can grow it, then I'm pretty much happy. You know, mm -hmm. that's those are those are to me the the biggest things. But I, I want to, to see it, it completely. Well. Yeah. well, yeah, and and sales. Not everybody wants to Sales grow. is very important. Not everybody's um, got the green thumb. They don't have what it takes to you know to grow it or whatever. It's true. What concerns me is the right to sell without the right to grow tends to lead to corporatism, mm -hmm. and those entrenched. Uh, monopolies that are created, like dispensaries, right. may well find that it's in their best interest to keep uh, marijuana as illegal as possible so that they can benefit more from their licenses. And that's happened in, that in California, California, where medical growers fought against uh, further yeah. decriminalization efforts. And so, it's terrible. How dare they? Yeah, it, it it it's it's insane, and it's not like there's not enough market. You know, there's there's going to be plenty of people. There are going to be enough recreational users in California if and when they get it. And I don't know; they might already have it. I haven't been watching. No, they California. don't. They don't have recreational there. But, okay, but medical but if and so when they easy get to it, get. It will expand the market so much. Yeah. That I there wonder, will be though. huge expansions of growers and new growers entering the field, and the established medical growers will already have the advantage. That's true. So and I think drive long prices term down. they're hurting themselves. Uh, yeah, I think so too. Um, but and they'll, it'll also drive prices down, so it'll be good for everybody to actually have recreational because it's pretty yes. easy to get the medical card in California, from what I understand. There's you know one-stop doctors who will just hand out prescriptions like candy. Uh, is my understanding. So, you know, you could argue that sort of through the system, through the medical system, it's relatively close to recreational in that it's not hard to get the medical card. And further, it's very unenforced in a lot of places as far as you're walking down the street smoking pot. Odds are good the cops aren't going to do anything about it. Well, um, I mean, that depends. One objection that I that I have to medical being used that way is... Um, that I'm I'm sorry. Spaced it. No worries. We'll come back to it. Uh, our toll free number. If you want to join us here, the anti marijuana politician in New York, one of them, uh, has been busted for having marijuana. Our toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. We also have Skype at Skype username lrn dot fm. So he received uh, his summons. He got a hundred dollar up to a hundred dollar fine. And shortly after the arrest, he issued a statement, quote, this should not overshadow the work I have done over the years for the public and my constituency. I am confident that once the facts are presented, that this will quickly be put to rest, whatever that means. And by that, does he mean he'll pay the hundred dollar fine and settle the matter? Because I, I can't imagine yeah. what that could mean unless he's going to, you know, throw Fight his it. son under the bus or something. I don't know if he has a kid. Yeah, I guess you um, could I guess you could argue that uh, a lot of these drug possession laws do require knowing possession of the product. So he could I suppose he could argue that he didn't realize it was there depending on where they found it. If they found it on his person, then that won't look good for him, but I suspect they no. didn't do that. Oh, and the objection that I'd forgotten is I don't like the idea of creating a registry of marijuana users. Yeah, good point. Our toll-free number again is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, some interesting perspective on Venezuela. Your calls about whatever's on your mind are welcome. This is Free Talk Live. Ooh, get the stinky 
dog away from me. PD stopped eating. All his hair fell out. Mounds and mounds of fur. Our hairballs have hairballs. Bad breath and bad gas. Chew himself raw. Sticky, gooey, smelly. She scratched incessantly. At least $5,000 in vet bill. And all it took was one container of Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Adding Dynavite to their diet has every single dog in my kennel looking better than they have ever looked. The shedding is stopped and the itching is stopped. Tons of energy, no more bad smell. She has gotten this puppy look. Her coat has sheen. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. My vet was completely blown away. Dynavite's the bomb. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. Are you tired of commuting to a job that makes someone else rich, working harder than ever, but getting nowhere? Do you hate spending hundreds of dollars every week on daycare, having someone else raise your children? With our opportunities, you can start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss, work from home, and live a happier life. At Be The Boss Network, you'll find hundreds of work-from-home opportunities that you can literally start today and be earning money as soon as next week. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss. Get out of the rat race. Work from home. Go to freedom106.com right now and change your life today. That's freedom, the number 106.com. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You be the boss. Go to freedom106.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road underground market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can join us here on the radio. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Also, Skype into the show. Skype username is lrn.fm, so feel free to reach out to us that way. And maybe you have a small business. Maybe you're thinking about starting a small business. You're probably going to need some business cards. So we'd like to send you to Vistaprint. 
You go to Vistaprint.com, use code FTL, like Free Talk Live, and you'll get 500 business cards starting at just $9.99. That's up to a 50% savings over regular site pricing. It's a fantastic deal, and it's super easy to actually go through the process of customizing your own cards. Now, obviously, you know, you can use their pre-rendered templates, but you can also upload your logo to one of Vistaprint's design. You can customize text, colors, backsides. You can even upload your own custom design as well. So whatever you want your business card to look uh, look like, Vistaprint can help you. They've even got fancy finishes available as well. So you can upgrade to uh, brilliant finishes like metallic, spot gloss, or raised print. So you can really have a nice looking card through Vistaprint. And you get a great discount up to, uh, again, starting at just $9.99, 500 business cards by using code FTL over at Vistaprint. And they guarantee you'll love your products every time or they will make it right. In fact, they've uh, got an amazing customer service experience and even custom design services. So if you need somebody to uh, to assist you with designing a card, they can help you with that as well. Again, vistaprint.com, code FTL, get you those 500 business cards starting at just $9.99. As uh, we continue here, it's Ian and Rich Paul in the studio. Let's go to Starchild in San Francisco. Starchild, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Starchild, great hey. to hear from you. Right on. Thank you. Hey, what's on your mind? Awesome to connect with you guys. Yeah, I know uh, this issue comes up every so often, and um, I wanted to talk about uh, voting and the reasons that I think people should vote uh, in government elections for pro-freedom candidates. Okay, sure, because there are a lot of people in the liberty movement who are very vehemently anti-voting. So, yeah, what would you say to those folks? Yeah, I would say uh, there's a number of arguments. One is the solidarity argument. You know, like I'm happy to support voluntarist or anarchist initiatives that, uh, you know, are totally outside the system or whatever. And, um, you know, I I think that uh, folks who are anarchist, voluntarist, and and aren't involved in political parties, you know, it doesn't take that much time and effort to, you know, once a year or so go and, and, and vote. You can look at it as a form of harm reduction or damage control and creating more space for people in civil society and uh, technology to move things in a pro-freedom direction. Um, another thing is to, just the, uh, it's not sending a clear signal uh, when you don't vote. You know, people don't vote for all kinds of reasons, mostly out of apathy. And the, uh, you know, the people who don't vote out of principled commitment to freedom, just, you know, their voices get lost in all that noise. They're not sending any kind of clear message. And even if they did, you know, it's like, it, it, it's never going to stop people from voting because the value of the votes, the monetary value of the votes increases the fewer people vote. You know, it's like mm-hmm. the, the uh, when you look at the amount they spend per vote in elections, uh, you know, the, the higher that number goes up, you know, the, the, the more they're going to, you know, put money into getting people to vote. And so the number is never going to you know, really reach zero just for mathematical reasons. That it's impossible. I mean, it's election. almost mm-hmm. impossible. There are some elections where there have been zero votes, but those have been re- weird flukes in very small towns where even the uh, uh, even the people running for whatever reason couldn't make it to the polls that day, and the government keeps going. I mean, the idea that if you stopped people from voting that the government would just all of a sudden stop doing what they do, which is, of course, threatening and taxing and extorting from people, uh, is ridiculous. Right. It has never happened. And, of course, you can always count on the bureaucrats to go out and vote. I mean, they are a, a solid voting block. They will go mm-hmm. out every single time to vote for for their system. You can count on it. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's... And, and although they, they pay lip service, the idea of, like, oh, everybody should vote and so forth, I'm pretty confident, you know, that what they would really prefer is that people who are going to vote against their agendas and so on stay, stay home, home and not vote. Absolutely. So what, I mean, I can prove that one. Really wants us to do. <laughs> I, I can prove that one for you, Starchild. Uh, here in Keene, as you know, we're here, Rich and I and a bunch of other people all across New Hampshire are here for the Free State Project. And every year yeah. there's a, a school board meeting that's like the most important school board meeting of the year. And we'll send in about 10 Free Staters in to this meeting and there's about a hundred people that attend the meeting so we don't have enough of a voting block to actually stop any of the you know the tax increases or whatever it is that they're proposing they basically propose a number of uh, warrant articles that will be voted on later on 
And uh, and so, you know, the, all these 70, probably 70 out of the 100 or 80 out of the 100 are teachers or their direct family members who attend and or school employees. And then another 10 are probably the, the most interested people in the community who don't actually work for the school. And then another 10 are free staters. And we will have people say things like, Op- openly say things to us and on the microphone say things like, well, you know, these free staters are here wasting our time. You know, they don't want us there at all. And it's funny, too, because on one hand, they complain when we do outside of the system stuff. So if we're in uh, Central Square smoking cannabis with Rich's 420 celebrations, they'll complain because I'm we're not working through the too. system. But then mm. when we actually go and work through the system, they complain because we're like working that. through the system. And they're amorphous in that way, in that, you know, you get attracted from so many different directions that, uh, you know, one group of people can be saying, oh, yeah, work within the system. And, of course, anybody who's actually involved with the system doesn't want us there because exactly. we want to cut down their power. And what I was going to say is that, you know, by voting, you know, it is similar to inflation in that by well, let's put it this way. When you don't vote, you give those people who continue to vote a larger slice of a fixed-sized pie, and that means they're going to get more. So I definitely believe that I'm supporting Rand Paul for the Republican nomination, and I expect to support Gary Johnson for the presidency. Um, I don't know. He's running against our own Daryl W. Perry for the Libertarian nomination. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm supporting Daryl Perry uh, right now. I think, uh, you know, um, hopefully we'll we'll get him in the, the debates and everything. And, Excellent. Uh, you know, in, in the Libertarian debates anyway. Yeah, uh, you can count on him uh, being in the Libertarian yeah. debate. I don't know if any other debates are going to let any Libertarians in, no matter uh, who they are. Well, I would say well, I that mean, Gary Johnson is... has a token system, too, you know, where you have to get a certain amount of support from delegates. It, it, oh, uh, okay. It's not as open as it ought to be, but I, I think, uh, you know... Mm, uh, gotcha. Can get him in there. See, I think um, Gary Johnson is on... much, le- more, much more likely to be allowed on the stage uh, for a national debate than Daryl would be because he does have some connections in the system. And I think it's... Yeah, but that won't get him on the stage because you actually have to uh, poll at like 15 percent prior to even being invited to one of those official debates or whatever. Yeah. No, well, the way the way that he would get on the, the stage. I'm sorry. What was that, Starchild? Oh, I just said the you know the the so-called Commission on Presidential Debates, which is entirely a creature of the Democratic Republican Party's uh, doctors, the, the rules as as they go uh, to uh, you know whatever right. they have to set them at in order to keep yeah. out. The, if uh, uh, if Gary Johnson candidate. was polling at fourteen percent, they'd probably all of a sudden change the rules, worried that he would actually end up getting that fifteen percent. They'd probably up it to twenty percent. Well, or something if, like if that. his support in the polls gets big enough, then they have to let him on the stage be to split it. Hey, uh, Starchild, I know you had another point. (laughs) Stand by. We'll uh, continue with your list of reasons to vote. 855-450 free. As a libertarian, if you're a socialist, you could stay home. It's Free Talk Live. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to produce an endless supply of nano-sized silver solutions right from the convenience of your home. Silver Lungs. With the addition of our unique lung delivery system, respiratory infections are targeted directly, where traditional oral administration simply cannot reach. This pioneering method also preserves the original particle sizes and delivers your silver solution directly into the bloodstream. See the Silver Lungs generator and lung delivery system at silverlungs.com. That's silverlungs.com. Hunters anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow, a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. 
Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through ExpressCoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to SaveItPurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through SaveItPurse.com. It's SaveItPurse.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Money, power, and respect are all yours at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Be seen as an industry leader. You can do it. The last application you filled out when it was time to hit submit, did your nerves spike? You didn't get the approval you seek, but there's a better way. We teach you exactly what to place into the right systems the right way the first time so you get approved. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many people will get cash on the spot. Use those two tools in your new corporate credit engine so you can walk into the bank and get your project funded today. It's all about today at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is explosive and ignites instant results. Dial 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or just go to CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Join us here toll free. 855 450 free is. Our toll-free number, that's 855-450-3733. And we have Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Right now, voting on the table for discussion. We could talk about Venezuela, self-driving trucks. There's all kinds of interesting uh, things in the news. With you in the studio, though, it's Ian. Rich Paul. And I want to invite you to save big time on your next Amazon purchase and every Amazon purchase you make after that. How do you do this, you ask? Well, with saveitpurse.com. You go to save, A-T, purse, saveitpurse.com, and get signed up for an account there. It's something you can do right now. You don't need to have your Bitcoin yet, but you will need to have Bitcoin eventually because saveitpurse.com only works with Bitcoin. So you pay with Bitcoin, and you get huge discounts. And I'm no joke. I'm talking 20, 25, 30, 45%. This is all possible with save at purse.com. Now, my highest discount has been 40%, but Mark's son just got uh, 45% off a Lego set through Amazon by using save at purse.com. So you can save big time. And the more patient you are, the more you can save. So the average purchase is a 20% off discount in the United States at saveitpurse.com. And if you do a 20% off, it's probably going to be filled within a few hours of you putting the request in. If you ask for 40%, you might be having to wait a few days for that one to get filled. Uh, so if you're in a super rush, you can use Purse Instant and save 5% and not have to wait at all. So it's just an incredible tool that makes it really worthwhile to think seriously about getting some Bitcoins because you can save big time. So you save at purse.com when you enter through that URL. Uh, Free Talk Live will get a very small portion of any purchases you make 
through the site from that point forward. So save at purse.com. Starchild is back with us here listening in San Francisco. Uh, Starchild, you were giving us some reasons why you think that people should vote. There are There's a certain contingent of people within the liberty movement who are, uh, they'll always talk out against voting. They'll say that it empowers the system, that it's you're consenting to the process, you're consenting to being ruled. Uh, what was it? The, I don't know if you want to rebut those points or make the, uh, the, yeah. the other point. No, actually it is uh, specifically uh, one of those points again that I was going to address uh, okay. for my, the last thing I was going to mention here. Um, that is the idea that you're somehow giving consent. You know, this argument always reminded me a lot of the, the statists who say, well, you know, you've consented to taxation and, and government rule and whatever because of the social contract, you know, that, that you know, they can't point to any actual contract ex- that exists. And similarly, the people that don't want you to vote can't point to any contract that you're signing when you vote that says you support the system or anything right. like that. It's, it's mm-hmm. a similar kind of a, a myth. And um, when uh, when people, uh, you know, uh, vote towards more freedom for damage control and, and so on, it's, it's, it's like you could analogize if somebody mugs you on the street, you know, and you you say, uh, hey, you know, uh, would you you know take some money in the credit cards, but leave the rest of the stuff in the wallet? So I don't have to go through the hassle of replacing all my ID and everything. Uh, you know, you're not consenting, you know, to the mugging just because you offer an opinion on on some of the way in which it should proceed yeah. if they're going to do it, right? And so I, I think that uh, analogy applies to to voting. Yeah. That argument was actually made in court uh, by a rapist who claimed that uh, his victim uh, requesting that he use a condom was somehow consent. To and, the rape? Uh, to the rape. Oh, and wow. that was shut down pretty quickly. And in, in even yeah, the courts got that one right. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, Rich, thanks so much uh, for standing strong and, and you know, uh, your whole jail saga. I'm so glad you're out of jail and you were able to, to do it without turning, uh, you know, state informants as they wanted you to. So, uh, you know, you guys are all doing great work up there in, in New Hampshire, and I, I uh, really uh, appreciate it. So you're a pretty uh, big mainstay. Thank you, bro. Yeah, thank you, Star Child. Uh, you're a mainstay out there in San Francisco, and obviously you just uh, benefited from the uh, inclusion of Derek J., who is our former uh, yeah, Monday Night you know, co-host. I, I haven't talked to him yet, but uh, D- D- W. Barker uh, gave me the heads up on that, and, and I uh, responded. And um, you know, Derek, I guess is interested in doing, having me on a show. He's yeah, totally. He hosts uh, for am, our listeners that don't know. I'm Derek J. is a former <laughs> now, free now talk. Well, hold on, he's a former free talk live. Back to me. I'm waiting to hear from him. We got our meeting uh, actually Saturday as our monthly LPSF meeting. I, I'd love to see him in person. Yeah, let me let our uh, listeners know. Derek J. is a former host of Free Talk Live. He is the host now of uh, Flaming Freedom and has been for a while which is a super gay, uh, liberty-friendly talk show, and I'm sure that uh, he'd, he'd love to have you on. What were you saying, Rich? It's super. Yes, it is. <laughs> super. But uh, the... Let's see. My God, <laughs> Two in again. one show. <laughs> <laughs> so, Starchild, thanks for the call tonight, man. I do, oh, uh, do appreciate hearing from you, and I look forward to seeing you in New Hampshire yeah. one of these days. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. The good news is we lost a Derek, but there are two new movers coming to New Hampshire from San Francisco, so we traded one for two. Oh, groovy. Not bad. Groovy. Not bad at all. If you don't know what we're talking about, you can go to freestateproject.org. Learn more about the Free State Project. If you love freedom, you really owe it to yourself to check out freestateproject.org. That's the reason why you moved here. Was it from Michigan, Rich, or were you in Florida? Um, I'm originally from Michigan. I lived most of my adult life in Florida, but technically I moved here from South Carolina. I also moved uh, from Florida, and people are coming from all around the globe because freedom matters, and it works. Uh, Activism works better when you have numbers. When you have more activists than the Republicans and Democrats do, That's a game changer, and we're not quite there yet here in New Hampshire, but I would argue we probably have more activists combined than one side or the other. I bet we have more free staters in state than active Republicans or active uh, Democrats. I I don't know how you calculate it. I would say that's probably true for... uh, I would say that there is more activity by the free state community by an order of magnitude than there is from the from the traditional community though uh i mean we are we're out there constantly living our philosophy and sharing our philosophy and you know the the democrats and republicans aren't that dedicated 
but it's true. they've got the advantage that they have been validated by the government schools, right. the government um, electoral system, they've which is horribly rigged. Yeah. But the thing is, it's a lot easier to sell the ideas of libertarianism when the Libertarian Party gets 5% in an election than if they get mm -hmm. 1% in the election, especially if that's a sudden jump, because all of a, pe all of a sudden libertarianism starts trending in places that it's never trended before. It becomes... It can become a lot more of a topic of discussion, you know, and that's that's another point. The other the other thing that I wanted to say about about working political campaigns was it's a great opportunity to take people who are very close to you politically and maybe have never been. For example, there are uh, Rand Paul Republicans who used to be neocons. And now they're thinking this Rand Paul guy is pretty good for yep. whatever reason. They saw something in their life that made them say, okay, I like this Rand Paul guy better than the old neocons. Well, if you can get to know those people as, say, a party libertarian or as an anarchist, they've they've now moved a lot closer to your position sure. and they're open to change at that moment and we're seeing that happen here in new hampshire where a lot of the republicans and to mm -hmm. a lesser extent some of the democrats are uh you know they're hanging around with free staters they're spending social time with these liberty activists free staters by and far are very principled libertarians or out and out voluntarists and you know anarchists mm -hmm. And just having that social time with these guys, spending the time mm. with them rather than them spending time with neocons is incredibly valuable in bringing them our direction. Oh, absolutely. And the other thing is you get to get the little things in. A lot of times people aren't aren't uh, aren't. Uh convinced during the heat of debate sure okay they're convinced by the offhand remark when specifically when they're not debating because when you're debating your armor your is on. Are on yeah when you're not debating something can catch you by surprise make you uh make you laugh and all of a sudden you realize oh my god that's true so you can join us here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, the self-driving truck hits the highways. It's here. And I'm talking big trucks. And also, uh, what's going on in Venezuela? And how does it relate to Austrian economics? Well, not at all. We'll tell you more. It's Free Talk Live. Ever wish you had a business that ran itself, put money in your pocket, and you didn't have to go to work? If I could turn your current life into that business... Then list it in the right systems that put money in your pocket so potentially you didn't have to go to work. Is that something you might be interested in? Credit Success Secrets Revealed is exactly that. We help you document your life as a business. We place that data in the right systems to trigger automatic personal and business credit that works. We teach you how to get business funding to buy assets that put money in your pocket. Credit Success Secrets Revealed works 100% of the time no matter your situation. It's as easy as following simple directions. We practically fill it out for you. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many people get cash in their hands right now. Call 1-800-707-719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or go to creditsuccesssecretsrevealed.com. No way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? They found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blockit Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Understanding your credit score is the first step towards managing and improving it. 
This is Charlie Sunstrom with your Van Dyke Mortgage Minute. The most influential component of your credit score is your payment history. Almost equally as important is the amount you owe on credit accounts. Also impacting your score, but to a lesser degree, are the length of time you've utilized your credit, the number of new accounts, credit inquiries, and your various types of credit accounts. To help achieve or maintain a healthy credit score, have a system set up to assure your bills are always paid on time. Don't max out your cards. It's better to have a high credit limit with a low balance. Never close old accounts. The age of these can actually help your credit score. But don't be afraid to use your credit. You need several accounts in order to have a credit score. Just keep the corresponding payments within your means. For your mortgage pre-approval and refi needs, start by visiting VanDykeMortgage.com. Corporate NMLS 3035. Van Dyke Mortgage is an equal housing lender. Charlie Sundstrom, NMLS 134251. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month. So drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Join us here and bring up whatever you'd like. You can also discuss anything that we've already talked about. Maybe the uh, politician, the hypocrite, who was busted. <laughs> after being anti-cannabis for actually possessing it. Uh, of course, I love those stories. I mean, they just they come up so often where these politicians, the ones that scream the loudest about the war on drugs and how badass of a drug warrior they are, and uh, and also the ones who are homophobic as well. They're the ones that get caught in the bathroom with their uh, their aid or uh, the anti-drug ones get caught with some sort of drugs. You just got to love those stories. Mm-hmm. It's Ian and Rich in the studio here. Our toll-free number, if you want to join us, 855-450-FREE. Coming up, the self-driving truck is here. It's hitting the roads uh, as a test in Germany right now. Also more about Venezuela, which is a topic I just you know am fascinated by, like a train wreck. Uh, we'll uh, get into all that. You can join us here again, 855-450-FREE, or Skype in at Skype username lrn.fm. It's 855-450-3733. So uh, the self-driving truck, the AFP reporting from Berlin, uh, the or Berlin, rather. I, I, I messed it up. It's actually Ber- it's Berlin, Berlin, Germany, and Berlin, <laughs> New Hampshire. Right, I'm so used to uh, pronouncing the New Hampshire version of it. Berlin, Germany. Uh, Automaker Daimler said it has trialed a self-driving truck under real traffic conditions for the first time. Uh, They announced this about a week ago on a motorway in southern Germany. The truck has smart systems, including radar, cameras, active speed regulators, and works without a human driver, although one does have to be in the driver's seat and take the wheel if necessary. Uh, at this point, at least, the standard Mercedes-Benz Actros, fitted with the intelligent highway pilot system, traveled 14 kilometers, about nine miles, on the A8 motorway with a driver in the cabin but his hands off of the wheel. Quote, today's premiere is a further important step toward the market maturity of autonomously driving trucks and toward the safe, sustainable road freight transport of the future, said Wolfgang Bernhard board member responsible for Daimler trucks and buses. Safe testing in real traffic is absolutely decisive for the development of this technology to market maturity. We're now able to proceed with this, he said, and he was the guy who sat in the driver's seat for the 14-kilometer test. Daimler unveiled the technology in May in Nevada on the iconic Hoover Dam, an hour's drive from Vegas. The truck in Friday's trial, the world's first series production autonomous truck, 
drove between Stuttgart and the town of Deckendorf in the southwestern state of Baden-Württemberg, where Daimler is headquartered. A totally self-driving truck without the need for human monitoring is still a long way off, however. Daimler compared the highway pilot to a plane's autopilot. It's able to steer the truck by itself while the driver retains full responsibility, needs to monitor the traffic at all times, and must be able to intervene at any time. I mean, obviously, it's important for someone to be there at this point in the development. But, you know, when they say it's a long way off before we have completely autonomous trucks on the road, what's a long way? Ten years? I mean, that's not that long in the scheme of things. Yeah. uh, Of course, the other issue is I think that uh, the uh, co-pilots or co-drivers, the humans who ride around in automated cars will probably tend to find themselves going to sleep an awful lot. So, mm-hmm. you know, I would I would expect that these AIs are going to have to be pretty good. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, and, uh, you know, at this point, it would obviously be very difficult for the AI to maneuver difficult uh, turning and, like, you know, going into the back of the delivery areas of various mm-hmm. different stores, which requires... Going around an accident or through a construction area, yeah. I think, would be some really difficult stuff to handle as a programmer. Well, these are the things that they've been doing uh, with a Google car. I'm sure you've heard that Google has itself a self-driving car and that they have tested this thing for countless miles now at this point. And they do have ways using cameras and radar detection systems, which it sounds like this truck is outfitted with. They Mm -hmm. do have ways of kind of dealing with the unexpected, dealing mm. with uh, the kid running out into the road in front of the, the vehicle or, or dealing mm. with a disabled car in the right lane or, or whatever. They, they do have ways of detecting and handling that already. And there's no mm. doubt there's challenging programming involved in that. Uh, but, you know, we're kind of already there. In the computer business, we used to say that we can handle all of the expected unexpected conditions, but as for the unexpected unexpected, unexpected conditions, you're on your Good own. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. I mean, this is going to require a lot of testing, I'm sure, certainly before any government is going to allow uh, a, a pilotless vehicle on the roads. But it's interesting. It was funny, too, because I was just this uh, this week watching a video review of the old Stephen King movie uh God, what is it called? I'm spacing oh, on it right now. Um, uh, where there's, there's these trucks that uh, have been taken over by some kind of alien spacecraft or whatever. and Overdrive. Maximum Overdrive. Yeah. Maximum Overdrive with Emilio the Estevez. The short story was under a different name, though, I, th- I think. But yeah, okay, Maximum yeah. Overdrive was definitely the movie. <laughs> with the ACDC soundtrack <laughs> and the trucks that are driving themselves around. And that's that's here now. Like It's real. Mm-hmm. The uh, oh, we've actually got Dave on the line here in Michigan. Let's uh, see what he has to add into the discussion. Dave, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Rich. Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey, what's on your mind, Dave? Uh, well, my wife works uh, for a major auto company here, mm-hmm. driving a forklift, and they have those driverless vehicles driving around the plant all over the place. Wow! And uh, hey. she had a big load. She drives a big high low forklift. <laughs> with a uh, 7,500-pound capacity, okay. and uh, she said she was driving down the aisle, her, you know, where she was supposed to be, and uh, she seen this thing. It was stopped uh, with a load, with its own load. I don't know with all the, those details, mm-hmm. but uh, she said she watched. She, she was wondering, what's this thing going to do? And as soon as she got within range, it took off and headed right for her and crashed into her forklift. Oh yeah, and she had this full load uh, raised up high, and the boom tipped back, and uh, the, the vehicle, her vehicle was was uh, out of commission. Hey, and Was she all right? She didn't get hurt, um, but that, that load was hanging. It was dangling. It could have fallen right on her cage. Oh, my gosh. So, That's and terrible. Then, and, yeah, and then everybody, you know, all these big wigs in the plant came and they said, "Oh, you know, we know." I mean, my wife has a, she has a perfect driving record. She's been driving for forty years. She, mm-hmm. you know, hasn't had any issues on the road, and never had an issue in the plant. And they all said, "We know, you know, this happens, and uh, it's their fault. It's this vehicle's fault." 
Then the next day, she had to go in. She she wrote her own report at home, you know, mm-hmm. and then brought it back with her. And uh, they gave her three days off and and disciplined her. Wow, acting like it was the robot's fault, like that. No, it, like it was her fault. Or excuse me, yeah. that it was her fault that the, the robot yeah. was infallible. That's right. And 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 even though Ooh. the the other bigwigs said the safety guys they. They said they wrote reports in her favor, mm. and she still got three days off. Wow. And th- they wanted to take her license. And the day she went back, she was in another. She was in her dock area, and she pulled up to check some, some parts that they – someone told her to go move some parts that w- it really wasn't her job, and it was very unusual that they asked her to do that. And so she went, got out of her high, her high low, and checked the, the parts. And then she got back in her high low, and she was sitting there. And she and here comes another one of these vehicles. And she thought, okay, what is this thing going to do? She was parked. It came right towards her and hit her forks again. Again, the day she went back. This just happened. This this wow. was uh, this week. Well, James Bond used to say that once has happened, stands twice as circumstance and three times as enemy action. So, <laughs> <laughs> Dave, uh, thanks for sharing that story. That's pretty spooky, and I appreciate uh, your call here tonight. Our toll-free number, if you want to join us, 855-450-FREE. Now, of course, that's private property, so if somebody wants to have a robot car or a robot forklift puttering around, then mm-hmm. that's fully within their rights to do. But, man, that sounds like they got some bugs to work out. Yeah, well, of course, the other thing is there are periodic uh, problems with human operators oh, yeah. who show up and, and hit things. So you can't compare the machine to the perfect operation you have to compare the machine to the real world, right? And it may well be, th- uh, even when even when these trucks cross the line to be safer than human drivers, there will still be cases in which the trucks malfunction and sure. somebody dies, and somebody's going to have to be watching the statistics and seeing how often that is. That yeah, that would be interesting to see. I suspect that they're already probably more safe than uh, than human drivers, but I guess uh, that's I'm sure there are people. If it that are was looking nothing but lo- but robot drivers, it would probably be safer than human drivers. Yeah, you might be right. Uh, the toll free number tonight eight fifty five four fifty free. You can join us here on the radio. It's free talk live. As a pioneer of the e-commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock's CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more. When the most powerful and destructive witch in 13th century France chooses a successor, her frightened young protege, Liana, escapes into the wild. Pursued by witch hunters, the town watch, and her mistress, Liana's only hope is a pair of newly returned crusaders, one with PTSD, the other a complete rascal. The Witch's Hand by Wendy Joseph is a cut above the usual sword and sorcery fair. Available now at your favorite booksellers or visit wendyjosephwrites.com. Why are you playing a slot machine sound for an online poker site? Do you have a poker sound effect? Because we have a new advertiser, swcpoker.eu. Brought to you by the same guys that did seals with clubs. Now they're called swcpoker.eu. It's Bitcoin Poker 2.0. They have lots of new games, including Chinese poker. The Krill leaderboard is active now. It's Bitcoin Poker from the brand you trust, swcpoker.eu. Get on over to swcpoker.eu and start playing now. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, October 9th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.89 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,154 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $246. Antiwar.com reports backed by continued Russian airstrikes and cruise missile attacks, Syrian troops are once again pushing into rebel areas around the Hama province, pushing into the Al Ghab plain to the west of the city of Hama, a key rebel stronghold in the region. Syria launched this offensive on Wednesday in the area between Hama and Idlib provinces and seems to be expanding it elsewhere in Hama, with an eye on eventually pushing north into Idlib, a province held almost entirely by Al Qaeda. Though Russia initially presented their involvement in the Syrian war as being focused on the Islamic State, the fighting on the ground looks to be starting with the Al-Qaeda-dominated Northwest, likely reflecting efforts to strengthen the supply route between Damascus and the Latakia coast, the government's last major strongholds. From a Syrian government perspective, focus on the Northwest promises some more high-profile attainable gains in the near term, and Russia likely sees the supply line move as protecting their own naval base at Tartus, a major focus of their decision to join the conflict. The rebels in the area, however, don't appear particularly concerned at being the first target of the offensive and issued a statement predicting that they would ultimately retain the plane. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports California Representative Kevin McCarthy, who had been under fire for comments on the Benghazi investigation, abruptly dropped his bid to become Speaker of the House on Thursday. It is unclear exactly why McCarthy, widely expected as the successor to outgoing House Speaker John Boehner, dropped out of the contest. He faced opposition in the nominating race on Thursday from House Oversight Committee Chairman Jason Chaffetz of Utah and Representative Daniel Webster of Florida. Representative Peter King of New York said McCarthy told Republicans Republicans in dropping out of the race, I'm not the one to unify the party. Representative Bill Huizinga of Michigan posted on Twitter, The room was stunned as McCarthy announced he is not the right one to lead the conference. At 8 a.m., he was at a forum making his pitch. Last week, McCarthy, the current number two in House leadership, made comments on Fox News suggesting that the House Select Committee on Benghazi was targeting Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. On Wednesday, Representative Alan Grayson filed an ethics complaint against McCarthy. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports South Carolina's governor warned on Thursday that several coastal areas were about to be hit by a second round of major flooding, while residents inland hauled soaked furniture and appliances from homes left in ruins by unprecedented rainfall. Governor Nikki Haley said the inundation expected in Georgetown, home to about 9,000 people, would last up to 12 days, and she urged residents to heed evacuation notices. She told a news conference in Somerville, don't underestimate the power of water. Officials on Thursday Thursday said 17 people have died after historic rains in the southeastern state, including 11 drownings and 6 traffic fatalities. The resulting floods caused 14 dam failures and at least $300 million in crop losses. Haley called the damage tragic, with roads destroyed, homes deluged, and farms left unrecognizable by the huge volume of water. Nearly two dozen caskets were disinterred by floodwaters in cemeteries. In Charleston County, emergency management officials told residents living near the Edisto and Santee rivers to monitor water levels as those bodies of water threatened to flood. In Colombia, where 11 inches of rain fell over the weekend, residents in the neighborhood ravaged by the first wave of flooding donned gloves and masks as they started clearing their homes of ruined possessions. Streets in the Lake Catherine community were lined with mud-soaked mattresses, soggy tables, and rolled-up carpets. Dead fish could be seen among the debris. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
The only nation where this regularly happens concludes that there's no way to prevent this. A college rape victim is pretty thrilled about recounting her assault to a faculty committee, and the nation's depressed individuals march on the Atlantic Ocean. This is The Onion Week in Review. Secretary of Veterans Affairs Eric Shinseki announced plans this week to improve health care for American veterans with a new $500 million state-of-the-art waiting room. The 150,000-square-foot complex will reportedly feature a wide selection of magazines, two water coolers, and receptionists who will immediately give veterans vague answers about how long they can expect to sit there before receiving inadequate health care. And in this week's commentary, a local man finds owning a cat is a great way to meet women who magically appear in your living room. In other news, a new study finds employee morale drastically improves after watching a co-worker throw a fit. A wise oracle proclaims to all at a barbecue that he felt a raindrop, and an elderly man is hailed as alert. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. It is Free Talk Live. You, of course, can join us right here toll-free. Our number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The story that we were, uh, well, we were just doing a moment ago is about the Dimer truck. Full-on, like, I don't know if it's 18 wheels, but it's a big-looking truck here. A big, uh, big old over-the-road truck kind of truck is now... Autonomous. It is now able to drive on its own without a human even touching the wheel. Now, they are still requiring a human to sit behind the wheel for all of these tests, and it'll probably be a while before the human goes away. But I imagine there are a lot of professional drivers out there who are not too happy about this particular technological development. Uh, it is Ian and Rich Paul in the studio here with you tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Maybe you are a professional driver, and you'd like to share your thoughts on the idea of your job's in jeopardy here. Because if this technology, or maybe I should say when, this technology matures to the point where it is able to handle all of the unexpecteds. Of course, as Rich, you pointed out, there are the unexpected unexpecteds. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it's pretty darn good, when the, when the automation systems of uh, driving are better on average, there are fewer accidents caused by computers than there are by humans, then that'll be the time at which you're going to start to see professional drivers being cut out of the picture almost entirely. I suspect that these trucks will remain expensive for quite a while. There's mm -hmm. a great deal of sensory information in there. Yep. And that's that's something that a lot of people don't understand about wages is it's not what is the value of the person doing the job. It's what is the value of the work being done. And so there's huge value here. I mean, uh, this is Yeah, there there is huge value there, but there will but there's also going to always be value to be added by having a, a human driver. That's true. Uh, in some cases. At least in the foreseeable future. Yeah. So I don't, um, you know, I expect that there will, well, for example, uh, you have trucks that go out and cement mixers go, going out to dispense concrete. You have, uh, you have uh, machines that move trees. Mm -hmm. Okay, those things are good. It's going to be much longer before those things are automated because that's a niche market. Yep, I can see uh, that. And it would be ex and and they're more complex tasks. The people who operate things like earth movers and that kind of thing are very skilled. So if the price of that kind of labor falls, what you would expect to see is more of it being done. Um, or more specialized being work being done, where maybe the display some of the displaced truck drivers start operating construction ma machinery, and all of a sudden the cost of doing construction falls somewhat. Hmm. So you know nobody, you know the Luddites rioted in Paris uh, with the in introduction of the automated uh, loom. And they said, oh, mm. there are millions of textile workers who will be put out of work by this. Well, 50 years later, for the, in the very, very short run, they were right for short periods of time. But what happened is after uh, 50 years, instead of having two sets of clothing only, 
your average person had seven or eight full suits of clothing in their closet. And I'll bet if you look in your closet, you'll find a lot more than that. And what happened to the employment of textile workers? It grew. Because it's of automation, making it cheaper to manufacture? Uh Yes, exactly. Automation made it cheaper to manufacture. Therefore, the social convention came became you change your clothes every day because it's. But how did that give more textile plan. workers a job if the because machines are, are replacing them? Because although they weren't actually operating looms by hand, you still have to have the people who mind the machines. Right. Okay. But not as many of them, you wouldn't think. You you need as many of them if you're if you're creating. I mean, you know, if there's seven four times, times the as much okay. consumption. And keep in mind mm. that there's a huge part of humanity that's barely consuming anything in India, in China, in Africa. Uh, yeah, you know, they get a lot of hand-me-down clothes. In some uh, of those places. Yeah, yeah, but but that's room. If you built them textile mills, they would be able to use them to make clothes, and then they would have more clothes. Hmm. So you never come to the end. The only time you will run out of work in the world is when everybody agrees that everything is perfect. Which is and not going to happen. I'm not, <laughs> or nobody is willing to spend any money on changing anything. Yeah. So I, I, I think running out of work is is a is a silly fear. It's not going to happen. Your job may change, right? But as long as the economy is growing faster than the population, people will always be getting richer, even on the lowest uh lowest ends of uh of society there's always some new goal there's some new thing to reach for there's new wealth out there that mm -hmm. can be created with existing wealth so you know whatever the product is that we currently have or the products and the things that we have today you can combine those or bring new ideas and combine mm -hmm. the existing things existing resources and products with new ideas and create mm -hmm. new services and products and so on and so forth so whenever something uh, whenever there are things out there, there's somebody who's going to say, I can improve on that, or right. you know, we can do this better or cheaper or whatever. And I agree with you. I don't think that we're ever going to see an end to uh, new ideas. Yeah, and, and keep in mind that whenever things get cheaper, that means that poor people can consume more. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, in the process of getting cheaper, some people may make less, but Everybody can consume more if things are, are cheaper. Walmart, Walmart is, uh, to the extent that it's profitable, doing a boon for the American people according to the, yeah. their values. I tend to agree. I mean, you can nitpick about some of Walmart's corporate policies, and there are some things in there that I'm not necessarily a fan of. But overall, I agree with you, Rich. They are doing amazing work driving down the price of goods in general. Yeah, and one of my uh, one of my hats I've got a lot of hats is uh, executive director of the Union of Unemployed People, mm -hmm. and speaking on behalf of unemployed people to the extent that I do, which maybe not at all, I would say I would <laughs> far rather see you're unemployed. You count. It's yeah. well, more or less. You know, I I I make two bucks an hour when I'm on the air because I have patrons, and if you want to increase Excellent. that, you can go to Patreon.com/slash Friar Rich. Uh, thanks for the That's opening, cool. Marion. Um, but uh, <laughs> Patreon, I, I I was checking into that yeah. recently. It's a cool idea. But the uh, Union of Unemployed People is, um, technically represents or, or attempts to represent people who are unemployed, people who fear they may become unemployed due mm -hmm. to regulatory increases, and people who op operate small businesses and want to employ people. So just about everybody has a, has a space. But I would rather see many, many more low-paying jobs than see just a few more high-paying jobs. The people who are really starving should be able to do something for themselves quickly, and we can worry about low wages when everybody has a job. 
Yeah, and I'd also like to see uh, less or fewer jobs and more entrepreneurialism. I, I'd like to see people be able to start their own mm-hmm. business without having to beg the government for permission, which is, of course, what keeps a lot of unemployed people and poor people out of uh, creating their own business mm-hmm. because it's so expensive and the regulatory burdens and you know startup costs that are forced on businesses by the regulations basically mm-hmm. keep all poor people away from creating their own wealth for themselves. And that's a tr- right. real tragic. Which keeps average profits relatively high because all of For those the businessmen barriers, who are in business all of those the purpose of high profits is for other businessmen to see that you're making high profits and go into your business and, and compete. compete with you okay to the extent that there are regulatory barriers to that happening to their exploiting that that opportunity, they are not liquidating that opportunity by reducing uh, prices. And cheap labor is the ultimate entrepreneurial opportunity, and people should be exploiting it and liquidating it. So uh, I think that might tie us in here to the story from PanAmPost.com. I think you're going to like, Rich, about Austrian economics and Venezuela's socialist disaster. They say the socialist disaster in Venezuela has proved that Austrian economics is right yet again. Told you so. Uh, 855 450 freeze our number. This is Free Talk Live. Ever wish you had a business that ran itself, put money in your pocket, and you didn't have to go to work? If I could turn your current life into that business, then list it in the right systems that put money in your pocket, so potentially you didn't have to go to work. Is that something you might be interested in? Credit Success Secrets Revealed is exactly that. We help you document your life as a business. We place that data in the right systems to trigger automatic personal and business credit that works. We teach you how to get business funding to buy assets that put money in your pocket. Credit Success Secrets Revealed works 100% of the time, no matter your situation. It's as easy as following simple directions. We practically fill it out for you. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many people get cash in their hands right now. Call 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or go to CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. My name is Bill Bonner, and I'm the president of the largest private news and research network in the world. And I paid for this airtime because I have an important message to the American people. There's a change coming that the government isn't telling you about. This change has deep implications for life in America, from where you shop to the doctors you visit and the family you want to protect. Look, I've made predictions like this before. Thing is, I was right then, too. A few years ago, I warned that housing prices would collapse. They did. Before that, I warned that dot-com companies would crash. They did. Those who listened had a chance to save themselves. But this has nothing to do with the stock market. This will affect us all. You can watch the video for free right now by going to disappearingwealth.com. Again, that's disappearingwealth.com. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Silvia rated an A-plus by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Halloween Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at Facebook.FreeTalkLive.com and then hover over it to get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.FreeTalkLive.com. 
This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is $1 higher at $1,155 per ounce. Silver is up $0.14 cents at $15.89 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $244. US We are seeing the first signs of a return of silver supply to the market. We have silver rounds and eagles back in stock. Give us a call at 800-874-9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. You can join us here. It's Free Talk Live. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 with you in studio. You've got Ian. Rich Paul. And you can get yourself protected on the Internet by signing up for ProXPN. If you care about privacy, you really need to go check out ProXPN. It's a virtual private network. They encrypt your online data, so your own Internet service provider, they won't know what you're doing online anymore. Uh, when you use ProXPN. And you can use it with Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and Linux. So pretty much whatever operating system you're using, they can get uh, you can get ProXPN working for you, and it's super easy. Just go to ProXPN.com, use code FTL50, and you'll save 50% off the regular monthly price for the lifetime of your account when you buy their annual account with code FTL50. Now that gets the price down to less than $5 uh, per month, which is pretty great. But if you want an even bigger discount, then pay with Bitcoin at ProXPN.com slash AMP. Now, you know about the Free Talk Live AMP program. That's the way that you can send some money into Free Talk Live and help us get on more radio stations and bring new people to the ideas of freedom. Well, ProXPN supports liberty, so they came up with an idea to help support the AMP program and give you a huge discount on their service. ProXPN.com slash AMP. Pay with Bitcoin through that link. You'll get two years of Pro XPN for less than $50 worth of Bitcoin. That's an incredible price for an amazing privacy service. And $5 of your purchase will go to the AMP program. So you get great service from Pro XPN. You get an amazing price and the AMP program benefits when you go through ProXPN.com slash amp now again if you don't have bitcoin yet you can still use the regular 50 percent off discount code code ftl50 at proxpn.com slash amp as we continue here of course you're invited to join us talk about whatever's on your mind but you know i'm fascinated by venezuela rich i think you've been on at least once or twice oh, when it's when, like a train wreck it you is can't look away no matter how hard you try it's it's terrifying as well in a lot of ways for the, the poor people that are there and having to go through this mm-hmm. Uh, because I know a lot of them do not want to be going through this, but they're poor, too poor to do anything else. They're too poor to leave, you know? Imagine if the government would just get out of the way and let them trade in Bitcoin, because the big thing they're dealing with there is inflation. And I know I just uh, saw a headline very recently that said the Venezuelan government was working very hard to keep Bitcoin out of there, specifically because it would provide a stable currency, which they can't do. Right. And so they're like a spurned lover saying, well, if I can't have you, no one will. (laughs) You know? I actually have that story. They've failed miserably at providing a currency, and we can do it for free and they won't let us that's how much governments love their people so i have a story about that and it's a little old it's funny that you mention it because i i literally had it pulled up here on my screen and you couldn't have known that uh but it's actually from back in january now maybe there's a more updated version but the claim here is that can tv can tv venezuela's state-owned and largest internet service provider has blocked, as of January, many Bitcoin-related domain names, websites, and mining pools, according to a report on Reddit. Now, maybe this is, you know, how verified this has been since then, I don't know. If you know more, you can call us toll-free at 855-450-FREE. But big sites like Mm -hmm. blockchain.info, coinbase.com have been blocked by the state-run ISP there in Venezuela. And so it's, it's pretty clear that, you know, they see competition 
from Bitcoin, and they know that Bitcoin is a way for people to protect their wealth to some extent. Yes, mm-hmm. it's in, it's vo- it's volatile. B- Bitcoin, you know, you don't know what's going to do from day to day, but it sure as hell isn't going to lose the value that Venezuela's uh, currency is losing. Yeah, Venezuela is in the midst of what Ludwig van Mises called the crack-up boom. And the crack-up boom is the bankruptcy of a fiat money government. Remember that a fiat money government can never go bankrupt in the cl- in the sense that a business does because they can't run out of money. They, they can, can keep always printing. print more. Right. But when the value of that money reaches zero, they're bankrupt because they can mm. print all the money they want and nobody wants it. Well, right. Once people um, stop using it, if they can they can find an alternative, even if it's you know seashells or whatever, any anything else besides mm-hmm. that money, then that's the end. Yeah, and seashells lack intrinsic value yeah. either in as in the commodity sense like gold or in the service sense like Bitcoin. The value of Bitcoin is is backed by the service that Bitcoin provides. Yes. Uh, seashells are backed by their value if glued to a kindergartner's sand <laughs> painting. Um, <laughs> All I'm saying is a seashell at some point will become more valuable than a boulevard in Venezuela. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. I I wouldn't be surprised if it cost a couple of boulevards to buy a seashell <laughs> now in Venezuela, if, especially if you get a pretty one on the beach. Um, <laughs> I love the story about the uh, the boulevard. I mean, it's horrible for the people that have to use it, but I don't know, like a decade ago, they came out with a strong boulevard. I don't know if you heard about that, Rich. So they had the boulevard ah. originally, and then they made the strong boulevard, which was worth one strong boulevard is worth 10 regular boulevards. <laughs> oh, really? So so that was probably their first inflationary yeah. collapse. Yeah. They'd, <laughs> yeah, governments will will do that. If go, if your government starts uh, uh, offering new currencies, you Look know out. they're in deep trouble. Um, yeah, and that's just uh, it's just they're just playing games. Yeah. I mean, they, do they think people can't figure that out? Well, you know, people haven't for hundreds and hundreds of years. Adam Smith wrote that when an, when a government's debt reaches a certain level, it is never actually paid. It is either uh, forgiven. Or it it yeah. they make what he called pretended payment, and what he meant by that is paying in debased currency. Sure, and that's exactly it was very difficult back in the day to debase currency because you actually had to melt down the coal, the gold coins, and you had to mix. Uh, a base metal with it and reform it, it into the coins. Or you could clip the ed- yeah. edges or acid soak them, although that was more of a street thing to do than a than a government thing to do. It was done from time to time. And then you have to do another thing. You have to introduce double think, and you have to require the people to take the adulterated coin as if it was a true coin. Mm-hmm. And as soon as that law is passed... You'll know it because Gresham's law takes effect, and uh, and good money, uh, bad money drives out good. That's where People if somebody has the choice to spend crappy money uh, or real money, like you know, let's say gold, silver, or Bitcoin, they'll choose the uh-huh. crappy money because yes. why would you not want to hold the other stuff? If it's at the same nominal, yeah. if it's at the same nominal value, imagine having two gold coins of different quality and you can trade either one for goods, you're going to trade the lower quality coin. It's the same way with other currency. So uh, fascinating stuff going on in Venezuela. We're going to talk about how it is that uh, it proves, according to PanAmPost.com's Andrea Garcia, that Austrian economics is right. And we'll get into that. You can join us here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Also, we've got Skype. Skype on in here to the show. And you can join the discussion. Bring up anything that happens to be on your mind. Uh, Skype username is lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live.
Paid non attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24 7. Call 800 261 That's 800 261 my name's Clyde, age 59, and I reside in Florence, South Carolina. The doctors diagnosed me as having clogged arteries. It felt like I was carrying heavy concrete blocks around my feet and legs. I started taking heart and body extract as directed. It is less than three weeks, and I'm like a young man again. It's unbelievable that an herbal formula can work so fast and so powerfully. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. After the USDA unveiled its updated roommate food pyramid earlier this week, Department of Agriculture spokesman Michael Lowry spoke to Onion reporters about just how many servings of someone else's food roommates should be consuming on a day-to-day -day basis. Under the new guidelines, roommates should eat at least four portions of someone else's grains per day including one to two cups of already open cereal. Of course, this is all in addition to the eight to 16 swigs of milk and orange juice spaced out over a few days. Lowry emphasized that many aspects of the new roommate food pyramid are unchanged from the previous version, including a recommended daily intake of 24 ounces of lunch meat straight from the bag and five to seven weekly finger scoops of Erica's peanut butter. Remember to limit your intake of sugar and sweets from half open containers, especially if they're Jessica's, cause she'll definitely notice. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. If you have a business, you know that IT can be frustrating, but it doesn't have to be. IT can serve your needs reliably, predictably, and on time. Rootwork Infotech helps businesses achieve always-on reliability. Their nerds know business and can meet your needs. To prove it, they'll give you 30 minutes on the phone with a senior consultant for free to answer any of your IT questions. Just go to rootwork.it slash FTL to get your free call. That's R-O-O-T work.it. IT slash FTL. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeene.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeene.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeene.com. That's FreeKeene.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit Promote.LRN.FM for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.LRN.FM. It is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can join us here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. We've also got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. And uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com has up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, 
and the rise of the police states. Go to freedomsphoenix.com. Sign up for their free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com. Story from panampost.com about the most interesting, in a bad way, country on earth right now, at least to me. Uh, I I would say maybe it's a toss-up between Venezuela and North Korea, although Venezuela we know more about because it's more of an open society than uh, the North Korea. To me, it's it's uh, Russia and Syria right now. Oh, really? I, I believe it's Syria because that having U.S. troops in and Russian troops in close proximity to each other, actually kind of engaged in combat, raises the uh, the danger of I don't want to call it friendly fire because they're not really friendly with each other, but people you don't really want to start a fight with fire. Mm-hmm. Um, sparking off a conflict between the two countries and and i would suggest that you know if you're an america firster that what you should say is if you believe in what's good for america then what you should say is let russia pay for the morass in the middle east for a while if they want to and you know if we have to go with domestic oil that's great because we can frack it at a pretty reasonable price uh, well, you know, um, I, that would be nice, but I don't expect they're going to do that, right? Because the no, US they're not going to do that. The they want to fight for every scrap of power. Yep, absolutely, and they certainly want to keep their military industrial complex uh, busy with all manner of manufacturing and uh, sending taxpayer dollars to those folks as well. Yeah, September twenty ninth, twenty fifteen. Marked Ludwig von Mises' 134th birthday. Although the Austrian-born economist passed away 42 years ago, his message remains more relevant than ever. Uh, He is widely regarded as one of the main stalwarts of the so-called Austrian School of Economics. But his philosophy and legacy go far beyond this field of study. Mises was one of the 20th century's most prominent opponents of socialism. He dedicated his life to proving that it was scientifically impossible. As a professor and intellectual, he opposed socialism in the classroom and in books, while at the same time fighting for Austrian independence, as Alfred Sonnenfeld wrote in his biography. However, Venezuelans who are suffering from socialist policies today can confirm his theories as fact, and recent events demonstrate the extent of our country's decay. So this is written from uh, someone who's in Venezuela. This is uh, Andrea Rondon Garcia, who's writing for PanAmPost.com. Adding to the constant attacks on freedom of speech in Venezuela, the Venezuelan National Telecommunications Commission, sounds like their equivalent of the FCC, Mm -hmm. sent journalist Cesar Miguel Rondon a letter, not a formal notice as it is legally required, criticizing him for allegedly being too soft on an interviewee. Rondon, one of the Venezuelan regime's most outspoken critics, interviewed the mayor of Cucuta, Colombia, Don Amaris Ramirez, who lashed out against the Maduro administration for keeping the Colombia-Venezuela border closed since August. Uh, so they're cracking down on the media to some extent in Venezuela. Mm. And as we had pointed out, or as we discussed in, in our most recent uh, talk about Venezuela, the uh, the president there, Maduro, has been basically rattling the saber with, uh, I think it's French Guiana and their other next-door neighbor, mm. Colombia, And they've been essentially building up troops. They've closed down the border. Anybody that crosses is being shot at, and it's pretty awful. There are so many moral lessons in what's going on in Venezuela, and the price for those lessons, the tuition is being paid in blood. So Mm. I hope that the world will sit up and take notice of what's going on there. Another illustration is when you try to impose economic unreality through socialism on a population, they will start smuggling things back and forth from their neighbors. Mm -hmm. That's happening. You And you absolutely have to stop that if you want to keep them in your dream world because you can't afford to make the whole world a dream world. You can only impose economic unreality over a very small area. <laughs> and as a result of that, you're going to have more board conflicts. You're going to have nationals from both sides smuggling which needs which leads to nationals from both sides getting shot yep. and when venezuela starts killing colombians then the colombian government gets upset and this sort of thing leads to war you cannot 
wall off your economy from the rest of the world, no matter how badly you want to. Well, this is, uh, one, some are suspecting that a lot of the saber rattling on the part of Maduro in Venezuela has to do with distracting the, the people in, in Venezuela and trying to, you know, get them all rallying behind the troops, the sort of nationalist fervor to distract them away from the fact that they're starving in some cases. Yeah, we've always been at war with Eurasia, <laughs> you know. Violence yeah, yeah. everywhere, says Pan Am Post. While government officials claim gun control legislation in the country has been successful, a grenade attack wounded six local police officers and four civilians in Baruta on Sunday, uh, September 27th. The free-falling boulevard. When Hugo Chavez took office in 1999, the Venezuelan boulevard traded at 0.5 boulevards against the dollar. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, the black market exchange rate borders 830 boulevards per dollar, plunging almost 400% since early 2015. And a month or two ago, it was at 600-something uh, per dollar. Before that, it was 500. Mm -hmm. So it's going up. Do you know what up. the ex exchange rate is officially? Yes, the official exchange rate uh, is, I think, currently set at 6.3 bolivars per dollar. 6.3, but the black market is 8? 800-something now. 800? Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay, so basically you can take 6 bolivar and uh, turn it into 800 bolivar by buying dollars from the government. If they would theory, sell them to you, but they won't. But they won't actually sell right. them to you, and that's the problem with... Uh, I, I talked about market unreality being involved. That's the thing is your prices become lies, okay? A price is not a price unless somebody stands willing to sell. Right, and uh, they're willing to sell on the black market. The legitimate business people aren't willing to bring in products because they are being paid in at the ex at the official exchange rate. So this is one of the reasons why toilet paper doesn't exist uh, very much at all in Venezuela, besides what comes into the black market. They use the money, I think. Probably at this point. <laughs> uh, the the, uh, the somebody who has a pallet full of toilet paper. Isn't uh -huh. you know a legitimate you know char Charmin or whoever whoever's distributing mm -hmm. Charmin in the in South America isn't going to come to Venezuela because they can't get paid in anything except for bolivars at the official exchange rate and that's not worth a hill of beans so they're going to go to Colombia or, or a any pallet other of toilet paper yeah <laughs> they're going to go to any other place where they can actually get paid in dollars or they can get paid in something else that they can convert to dollars at a, at a decent exchange rate. They're going to do business where they can do business. And that's why you've got people smuggling things uh, out of Venezuela. One of the reasons is because if you can, if you find toilet paper, you can actually smuggle it out of Venezuela and then get someone to pay for it regular market rates out in Colombia in dollars, bring the dollars back into Venezuela, and then live fairly well if oh, you can God. get dollars. It's like watching Atlas Shrugged play out and do you, you know that helpless feel have you read it i haven't oh no. god it's a great book and you have this helpless feeling as you watch the government drive the economy into the dirt and that's in a novel it's even more painful when you watch it in happen reality. to real people because real people are suffering and yeah. real people are dying as as a result of this people are being robbed uh trucks with food on it are being waylaid uh, it's mm -hmm. a scary scary situation and you and know, with gun control if you're small god help you because yep. guns are the great equalizer that's what give old little old ladies a fighting chance well the government still had plenty of guns in venezuela our toll-free number here there's more from take the story there's venezuela <laughs> take their gun 855 450 free that's 855 450 3733 more uh, from this story and your thoughts are welcome this is free talk live chooses a successor. Her frightened young protege, Liana, escapes into the wild. Pursued by witch hunters, the town watch, and her mistress, Liana's only hope is a pair of newly returned crusaders, one with PTSD, the other a complete rascal. The Witch's Hand by Wendy Joseph is a cut above the usual sword and sorcery fair, a thinking person's historical fantasy novel. Available now at your favorite booksellers or visit wendyjosephwrites.com. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or money back. We even accept Bitcoin. 
Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. Uh, no way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? Dave found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. So you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. There comes a time when you need custom embroidered or screen printed apparel for your business, organization, or a special event. Corporate Casuals has been helping people create great looking logoed apparel for over 25 years. They can produce a single piece or thousands using name brand apparel like Nike, Patagonia, Adidas, and Hanes. Create your logo in their online embroidery design studio or upload your existing logo and they'll turn it into embroidery. Go to corporatecasuals.com slash FTL and include FTL in the order notes and save 5% on your order. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You can join us on the radio waves. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight... In the studio, you've got me, Ian. And Rich Paul. And, of course, you can join us on Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. We're talking about Venezuela and the story from PanAmPost.com written from someone in Venezuela, Andrea Garcia, who is uh, pointing out that Venezuela's socialist disaster is proving Austrian economics right yet again. And they're talking about the free, excuse me, the free-falling boulevard. And how it is just not doing very well at all. In fact, the black market exchange rate is now at around 830 bolivars per dollar. As of the last time we were talking about the exchange rate for the for the bolivar a few weeks ago, it was 600 something. Prior to that, it was 500. It has gone through quite a bit of inflation. Some would say it's definitely in the hyperinflation uh, phase at this point mm -hmm. in Venezuela. One of the articles we had shared previously on this topic. A guy tried to uh, – he calculated the cost of making a sandwich, mm -hmm. <clears throat> a particular kind of sandwich that you find in Venezuela. I don't remember what it was called, but you know, he calculated the cost of the bread and whatever else went into the sandwich. And then a week later, he did the same calculations. The price had doubled in one week's time. 
Oh my God. See, if prices double in a year, that's technically uh, hyperinflation. Yeah. Uh, as as I understand it, so they are way they are way into hyperinflation territory, as I understand it. If you take that to be their overall inflation rate, and it's probably a pretty good moral inflation rate um but the official inflation rate usually they lie about about those numbers oh, and yeah. they they manipulate those things a great deal i believe they stopped actually reporting those numbers at the beginning of this year oh oh yeah that's usually a bad sign <laughs> yeah that's like acknowledgement of defeat yeah. if the job of a central bank is to head off inflation and <laughs> keep in mind that if the job is a, of a central bank is to head off inflation then ours has failed every single year of its existence but uh but that's just admitting defeat if you just stop publishing the numbers. I won't even tell you anymore yeah. <laughs> how badly I am doing my job because I'm that embarrassed about it. So take that as your answer. To have a sense of Ren uh, Venezuela's runaway inflation, consider that the highest denomination bill available, 100 boulevards, buys just 9.4% of what it did back in 2007. Capital and price controls are driving the national currency into the ground, and the government knows it. It's been months since the Venezuelan Central Bank last released the official consumer price index. Okay, that article needed an edit. He didn't need to tell you the largest size, of the, the size of the largest bill to give you a percentage. Every bill yeah, burns that buys true. that same percentage. Mises warned of the destructive forces behind these events in his book Socialism, saying, "Quote: The socialist community is a great authoritarian association." in which orders are issued and obeyed. This is what is implied by the words planned economy and the abolition of the anarchy of production. The inner structure of a socialist community is best understood if we compare it with the inner structure of an army. Many socialists indeed prefer to speak of the army of labor. As in an army, so under socialism, everything depends on the orders of the supreme authority. Unquote. Mm -hmm. Since 2003, the Venezuelan government has pushed central economic planning as its fundamental policy. Chavistas have imposed price and exchange controls, ignored property rights, expropriated businesses, and destroyed the private sector's productive capacity. When economic liberties are compromised, political and civil liberties go with them. The blatant threat against César Miguel Rondón demonstrates how low the government has sunk in its attack on freedom of speech. And we'll talk to you uh, more about this in a moment. Rick is on the line with, uh, or he was, and he just dropped off. Every day it's harder for public opinion in Venezuela to monitor the government. The few independent outlets that dare to criticize officials have, as you might have expected, become under attack. This was inevitable, as Mises put it. Corruption is an in evil inherent in every government, not controlled by a watchful public opinion. In the wake of these events, our dictator, Nicolas Maduro, flaunts his grip on power. However, Venezuelans must remember Mises' personal motto, do not give in to evil. Old and new liberal institutions like CEDICE Libertad and the Ludwig von Mises Institute in Venezuela are planning on keeping up the good fight. L Ludwig von Mises' full motto actually was never give in to evil, strive on ever more boldly against it or oh, words okay. to those to those effect they abbreviated him <laughs> i'd say that uh i'd say that we're doing our best on that front here in new hampshire with the the free state project there's a lot of striving towards freedom here it is the boldest striving toward libertarianism that i have seen in my life and i've been a libertarian since uh well, my first vote for a Libertarian Party candidate was in uh, 1996 for Harry Brown. Yeah, uh, nice. Four years before that, I'm I'm sorry to say, I apologize. I voted for Clinton. <laughs> um, Although then again, I mean, W and Obama have kind of made me long for even the Clinton era. Um, sure. I mean, he was very small government in comparison to George Bush. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's grown every single uh every single administration if we didn't need all this stuff 200 years ago why do we need it now if we didn't need it 100 years ago why do we need it now the the economy was working great 
until the introduction of the Federal Reserve. Americans were getting richer and richer and richer. Yeah, and that's when they started to debase the currency. Exactly. Right? Inflation is the greatest way for a government to create poverty and to create a gap between the, the rich and the poor because poor people store their money in cash and rich people store their money in real estate, in stock, in commodities, in things that float on top of inflation. So mm -hmm. every time you print another dollar, you have to know that you are robbing from the poor and you are giving to the rich. And, if you, and the primary explanation for for the gap between rich and poor, I believe, comes from the monetary debasement that has been going on and corporate welfare. Yeah, I'd say there's a strong argument for that. If you want to join us here, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Here's an absurd related story from Venezuela. This published uh, within the last week over at also the same website, panampost.com. The governor of the Venezuelan state of Bolivar has some advice for dealing with the widespread shortage of food across the country. Can't find eggs at your local Venezuelan grocery store? Why not try fried rocks instead? Governor, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Governor Francisco Rangel well, said... that may be some very deep sarcasm. <laughs> um, you know, I can uh, let them fry rocks. <laughs> he says on his radio show on Tuesday, September 29th, that the Venezuelan people should not, quote, yield to temptation, unquote, or worry about being able to find a pack of flour or sardines to buy amid shortages. Quote, let them take away whatever they want. We are capable of eating a stick. Or instead of frying two eggs, fry two rocks, and we will eat fried rocks. <laughs> but no one can beat us. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this isn't the onion. I think this is legit. Uh, Rangel referred to the so-called economic war and the induced inflation that he and other ruling party leaders claim is being caused by the opposition. Now that the prices are sky high, we need to fight against this together. Let them not feel like they have beaten us, he said. <laughs> <laughs> we'll teach those laws of economics. It's only a flesh wound. Put your arms off. It's only a flesh wound. <laughs> uh, according to Andres Bello, Catholic University, the cost of basic food needs for an average family in Ciudad Guiana, Bolivar, increased by 18.79% in just the month of August. If you think about that for a moment, imagine your cost of uh, of food going up by nearly 20% in one month's time. Uh, a lot of people are they're having a tough time putting food on on uh, their family's plates, not just mm -hmm. in in uh, you know in Venezuela, but in the U.S. and in other places. I mean, if your budget is mm -hmm. tight, then food's one of the things that you can only cut back on so much. Right. And now your cost just increased by nearly 20 percent in a month. That's a huge hit to anybody that is uh, is trying to feed a family. Absolutely. And, you know, we're learning that to some extent here. The McDonald's dollar menu is mostly up to a dollar fifty. Is that right? Have you notice that? I don't shop there, but okay. I'll take your word for it. Well, I go every once in a while and, you know, the uh, cup of iced tea that they used to charge a dollar for mm -hmm. for years and years and years. And you don't want to change the prices on your dollar menu. Nope. You have to be under extreme stress to do that. Well, yeah, well, you can it's only... dollar seventy nine now. So right. that's 79 percent increase in the price of iced tea. And you can only uh, whittle down the, the amount so much, right? Like you can only cut the cup. Uh, the size of the cup so many times before people start to notice that. So, yeah, they, they have to raise the price. Yeah. Uh, 855 450 free. Share your thoughts. This is Free Talk Live. Currency is too important a thing to be left in the hands of government bureaucrats, especially when billions of dollars can be created with the swipe of a pen. Overstock.com supports the cryptocurrency movement because it returns the power of an inflation proof form of money to the people where it belongs. Did you know that you can use Bitcoin to pay for anything Overstock.com sells while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more? If you support freedom and the cryptocurrency movement, you should support Overstock.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? 
stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. BlakeDevelopment.net is a global leader in website creation, app development, and online marketing, catering to businesses of all sizes. There's really no job too big or too small for BlakeDevelopment.net. Do you have an idea for a killer app, but you don't know how to code it? Are you missing out on online sales? Or maybe your business needs help with social media. Websites start at just 200 bucks, and they're offering three years of free domain registry. Yes, they take Bitcoin. 844-SITE-123. BlakeDevelopment.net, 844-SITE-123. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, October 9th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.89 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,154 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $246. Antiwar.com reports, backed by continued Russian airstrikes and cruise missile attacks, Syrian troops are once again pushing into rebel areas around the Hama province, pushing into the al Ghab plain to the west of the city of Hama, a key rebel stronghold in the region. Syria launched this offensive on Wednesday in the area between Hama and Idlib provinces and seems to be expanding it elsewhere in Hama, with an eye on eventually pushing north into Idlib, a province held almost entirely by al-Qaeda. Though Russia initially presented their involvement in the Syrian war as being focused on the Islamic State, the fighting on the ground looks to be starting with the al-Qaeda-dominated Northwest, likely reflecting efforts to strengthen the supply route between Damascus and the Latakia coast, the government last major strongholds. From a Syrian government perspective, focus on the Northwest promises some more high-profile attainable gains in the near term, and Russia likely sees the supply line move as protecting their own naval base at Tartus, a major focus of their decision to join the conflict. The rebels in the area, however, don't appear particularly concerned at being the first target of the offensive and issued a statement predicting that they would ultimately retain the plane. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports California Representative Kevin McCarthy, who had been under fire for comments on the Benghazi investigation, abruptly dropped his bid to become Speaker of the House on Thursday. It is unclear exactly why McCarthy, widely expected as the successor to outgoing House Speaker John Boehner, dropped out of the contest. He faced opposition in the nominating race on Thursday from House Oversight Committee Chairman Jason Chaffetz of Utah and Representative Daniel Webster of Florida. Representative Peter King of New York said McCarthy told Republicans Republicans in dropping out of the race, I'm not the one to unify the party. Representative Bill Huizinga of Michigan posted on Twitter, The room was stunned as McCarthy announced he is not the right one to lead the conference. At 8 a.m., he was at a forum making his pitch. Last week, McCarthy, the current number two in House leadership, made comments on Fox News suggesting that the House Select Committee on Benghazi was targeting Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. On Wednesday, Representative Alan Grayson filed an ethics complaint against McCarthy. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
Reuters reports South Carolina's governor warned on Thursday that several coastal areas were about to be hit by a second round of major flooding, while residents inland hauled soaked furniture and appliances from homes left in ruins by unprecedented rainfall. Governor Nikki Haley said the inundation expected in Georgetown, home to about 9,000 people, would last up to 12 days, and she urged residents to heed evacuation notices. She told a news conference in Somerville, don't underestimate the power of water. Officials on Thursday Thursday said 17 people have died after historic rains in the southeastern state, including 11 drownings and six traffic fatalities. The resulting floods caused 14 dam failures and at least $300 million in crop losses. Haley called the damage tragic, with roads destroyed, homes deluged, and farms left unrecognizable by the huge volume of water. Nearly two dozen caskets were disinterred by floodwaters in cemeteries. In Charleston County, emergency management officials told residents living near the Edisto and Santee rivers to monitor water levels as those bodies of water threatened to flood. In Columbia, where 11 inches of rain fell over the weekend, residents in the neighborhood ravaged by the first wave of flooding donned gloves and masks as they started clearing their homes of ruined possessions. Streets in the Lake Catherine community were lined with mud-soaked mattresses, soggy tables, and rolled-up carpets. Dead fish could be seen among the debris. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A new report from the National Center for Education shows that an alarming 10% of U.S. high school students graduate without basic object permanent skills. According to the study, a growing number of American seniors are lagging behind their international counterparts when it comes to the crucial knowledge that things don't just disappear if you're not looking at them. Because it exists even if your eyes can't see it. Am I making sense? No. U.S. high schoolers have dropped to 17th in science, 25th in math, and a troubling 180th place in the basic cognitive awareness most humans develop as toddlers. Secretary of of Education Arnie Duncan is asking Congress to fund increased after-school disguise and reveal programs. It's time to get the kids excited to learn the most obvious mental concepts that make us capable of functioning. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to do better. It's just I don't know how I'm supposed to learn anything if I don't even have a teacher. I'm still here, Vanessa. Oh. Some educators worry that too much focus placed on object permanence might take away from other important skills, such as not touching hot things that could burn you. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. Launching into the third hour, plenty of time if you want to join us here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, you've got Ian. And Rich Paul. Let's go to the phones and the fun, and then we can talk more about some terrible uh, places around the world. North Korea is next on the list. Uh, Rick, though, is first with us in Vegas. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Rick. Hello. Oh. Hi there, Rick. You're on the air. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hey, I wanted to bring something up. Um, why the media is talk? you know, they talk bad about Russia and Putin, and everybody thinks they're bad people, but how many people actually ever been to Russia or can even speak the language? That's an excellent question. I would point out that it's important to separate politicians from people. Uh, politicians tend to be sociopaths and psychopaths and, in every nation. Yeah, and so I would say that Putin. Yeah, I, I, I would say that Putin is a bad person, uh, just like uh, Barack Obama and George Bush are bad people. Uh, but the people of Russia are probably good people for the most part, just like the people of any other country in the world. Yeah, I think there's a lot of truth to what you said, but I've been going there for almost 20 years, and my wife is grew up in eastern Ukraine, and she considers herself Russian. Mm, okay. And she's lived here for the last 15 years. And I was, I don't know, I grew up in northern Minnesota and North Dakota, so I was sort of la-la land there. But I've lived in Florida for the last 35 years, and I travel the world on business. And I guess what I'm trying to get at is that I've watched the last 20 years Russia has become us, and we have become Russia. What do you mean by that? You know, they, well, they sort of learned their lesson trying to let the government control everything. You know, towards the end of communism, if you didn't work, you went to jail. If you got a divorce, if you cheated on your wife, you went to jail. 
everything was a punitive punishment to get people to do what the government wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And like my father-in-law told me, he's 74 now, everybody quit working. They're, once their work rate went below 60%, the economy crashed in 91. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there needs so much synergy to keep everything going. And we're doing this, you know, and let's just take this, the, the big topic that's happening now in the last year is Ukraine. You know, the, the legally elected president was a crook. Everybody knew that. But Western European people didn't like his alliance with Russia, and plus the Western Ukrainian people, which to a large extent are Austrian-Polish people because it was redivided after World War II, and they, that is the people that joined with Hitler in 39, 40 to attack Russia. And that political party, you can check it on the Internet, the political party that's backing the current government also backed the Nazis. And they've just taken and made a, uh, a Nazi war hero, a Ukrainian Nazi war hero, like uh, they got a holiday or something for him now, but it's the same parties. So what we did is we took Yanukovych's a political partner and made him president after the coup that was introduced by the West. And I used to have an apartment in Kiev. And we watched it on TV, Russian and English TV. And those people weren't even speaking Russian. They were speaking Polish and Hungarian and every other damn thing. And they burned down the city. And people are wondering why Russia... And then this guy's a crook. But when you start that tit for tat, it'd be like if people who don't like Obama, the last thing, I don't like him, but the last thing I want to have happen is people push him out of power illegally because then you have anarchy, right? Ah, uh, well, anarchy would be a big improvement over what we've got now. I mean, Putin, yeah. Putin has backed government off a, a little bit, maybe, but don't forget that Pussy Riot went to jail for two years for singing a song prison. that they went to didn't prison. like. Yes. A terrible well, prison. A terrible prison, and they were horribly abused yeah. in that system. Well, hold on. Do you know the whole story on that? We followed it pretty closely here on Free Talk Live. Yeah, I would think so. Ganesha Penny Meyer groups. What did you say? I'm sorry. That was I Russian. asked you if you understood in Russian. Yeah, you don't because we you believe someone who told you something, okay? And you know the Russian language doesn't translate into English very well. Well, what what are you going to tell That's us? That's Pravda. About? What what can you tell well, us about me, it? Well, yeah, tell us something well, we don't know. The church that she, that they broke into to film this video, they broke into it illegally, okay? Is like the most sacred church in Russia in the Ru in the Orthodox religion, mm -hmm. and they urinated and defecated all over the church. Okay, well, I got to tell that? you that that that's uh, you know that did not make it certainly into uh, the no. news reports. That's no. not the part of any uh, any report that I've Dude. that I've seen. I would well, be. Some data. That's that's the whole problem. Is there's half truths, and that's where you know little Johnny comes to tell mommy. Eddie hit him. Well, yeah, but little Johnny hit Eddie first. You know what I'm saying? Where do you? Yeah. So where? Uh, so where did you get that story? I mean, where do you? Uh, where do you hear that news? It's all over. Just watch it on Russian TV. You know, in their culture. And Has Russia Today covered it? Or is there an English language source oh, for R this? RT is crazy. RT is crazy. Those guys are all over the place. Yeah. Well, well, Russia today seems to be it. very supportive of the Russian government. I mean, they're they're great at criticizing well, the U.S. Are. Oh yeah, they the are. the Russian the, Russia today is often correct when they talk about the U.S. government and often wrong. But that that doesn't mean that they don't have an agenda. It's just that they're they don't Fox. have the they're same agenda Fox. as the FCC has. They're Fox News of Russia. Okay. I see what you're saying. Hey, Rick, yeah. thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. And, you know, I, I am interested in hearing the details about this urination claim because my understanding of the Pussy Riot story, this is a punk band uh, in Russia. They uh, they were arrested after or during their visit to the Russian Orthodox uh, Church, and they uh, were at this, you know, head cathedral or whatever, and they went and they played music was the supposed story. 
Uh, they, they did a performance without having permission to do so. Now, no doubt they shouldn't be doing something like that on private property. Uh, but does that mean they should spend two years in prison? I would say absolutely not. And even if they did do as he is suggesting, and that is urinated and defecated on, uh, you know, on this church in some way, that you know, the appropriate response would be to have them clean it up or pay for the cleanup operation, not go to prison mm-hmm. for, uh, for two years. Certainly one should be required to pay for any damage that they do. Yeah. And, you know, I, I wouldn't say that's not, that's not the case, but, uh, yeah, two years seems awful steep. It's, you know, I put in uh, the, the Pussy Riot urinated in church in Google just to see if I could find something, and nothing obvious uh, is coming up here, you know, claiming that that's the true okay. story. So, I don't, okay. you know, it's, it's hard to believe the mainstream media. I get that point, but usually there's at least some sort of alternative press or something out there reporting the supposedly real story. Anyway, toll-free number tonight if you want to join us is 855-450-FREE. I'm, I'm not saying that, that, that I disbelieve his claim. I would just like to see some evidence uh, for the claim. Because mm-hmm. you would think that if, the, if that's what happened, wouldn't the Russian government be putting that out there big time? And generally the yeah, media picks that up. Yeah, you would think they would defend themselves and say, yeah. hey, look, this is what they did. I don't think Putin is, is that much of a shrinking violet that he can't go on American TV and you know, d- correct some misconceptions misconsumption- right. or make a press release. There's even if the left wing media wouldn't pick that up in the United States, the right wing media probably would or vice versa. I don't know who's more more aligned with that particular group of people, but somebody would try to make political hay out of yeah. it. Yeah, and it's also uh, worth pointing out that, you know, Russia, of course, has been in the news, at least internationally, and uh, for the anti-gay laws that they have there, which uh-huh. are absolutely horrifying, and have resulted in basically skinheads on the streets harassing gay people or who they believe uh, to be gay. Anybody who doesn't look sufficiently masculine. And not just harassing them, but actually physically attacking them as well. If you're just a gay guy trying to go to work, you could be attacked by some band of hooligans uh, in Russia. And, you know, there probably won't be much punishment for them if they get caught. 855-450-FREE. That's our toll-free number. You can share your thoughts on Russia or whatever you want. Free Talk Live. Ever wish you had a business that ran itself, put money in your pocket, and you didn't have to go to work? If I could turn your current life into that business, then list it in the right systems that put money in your pocket so potentially you didn't have to go to work. Is that something you might be interested in? Credit Success Secrets Revealed is exactly that. We help you document your life as a business. We place that data in the right systems to trigger automatic personal and business credit that works. We teach you how to get business funding to buy assets that put money in your pocket. Credit Success Secrets Revealed works 100% of the time, no matter your situation. It's as easy as following simple directions. We practically fill it out for you. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many people get cash in their hands right now. Call 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or go to CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Paid non-attorney spokesperson, Ricky LeBlanc, admitted in Mass only. Sokolov Law, LLC, Chestnut Hill, Mass. Ken Levin, responsible attorney in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Greg Hobby, New Jersey. The choice of lawyer is an important decision that should not be based solely upon advertisements. While this firm maintains joint responsibility, most cases of this type are referred to other attorneys for principal responsibility. If you know what mesothelioma is, you or someone you love has likely been impacted by this devastating cancer. You may be entitled to compensation. Call Sokolov Law today. 1-800-218-HELP. The only known cause of mesothelioma is asbestos exposure. Thousands of hardworking men and women, including many U.S. veterans and industrial workers, have been diagnosed with mesothelioma because manufacturers knew the dangers but put profits ahead of people. An estimated $30 billion in court order trust has been set aside to pay money to asbestos victims. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with mesothelioma, call now. You may be entitled to receive compensation without ever going to court or filing a lawsuit. Call for a free legal consultation at 1-800-218-HELP. That's 1-800-218-HELP. My name is Angel Rach. I'm a mother of two teenage children, and I fought all the way to the Supreme Court for the right to use the medicine that saved my life. I've been permanently disabled for 10 years with an inoperable brain tumor, wasting syndrome, and several other serious conditions. 
For four years, I was in a wheelchair, in so much pain, I couldn't even hug my kids. The hardest part was looking in their eyes and seeing how much they were suffering because of my medical condition. The medicine that gave me my life back and gave my kids their mom back was cannabis, also known as medical marijuana. With medical marijuana, I can walk, maintain my weight, and I can be a mom. Without it, my doctors believe that I would die. To learn more about medical marijuana, contact Marijuana Policy Project at 1-877-JOIN-MPP or on the web at mpp.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is your Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is $1 higher at $1,155 per ounce. Silver is up $0.14 cents at $15.89 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $244 US dollars. We are seeing the first signs of a return of silver supply to the market. We have silver rounds and eagles back in stock. Give us a call at 800-874-9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You may join us here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And joining you in studio tonight, you've got Ian. And Rich Paul. And you can also get Free Talk Live t-shirts online. I am wearing one of them right now. So if you are on the webcam uh, here tonight, you can see that. You can go to cam.freetalklive.com. And uh, the cam will show you the shirt, which is kind of a fancy shirt. There's like standard t-shirts available and then there's this other, I forget what it's called, it's called like ringed or something like that, where uh, the, the sleeves have like a secondary color on them. In our case, it's, uh, it's yellow or gold and black. The front of the shirt says, Texas are theft, and the back side has our Free Talk Live logo on it. And then there's also just a plain Free Talk Live logo shirt uh, that is available as well. You can go to gear.freetalklive.com and place your pre-order. You can pre-order by October 31st, and you'll be part of the initial run of shirts that are printed. So the shirts don't exist yet, uh, but they will, or I mean, a bulk of them don't exist yet. Obviously, I'm wearing one of them. Uh, but there's different cuts of the shirts as well from which you can choose, including ladies' cut shirts, which is important because you don't want to forget about the ladies. Uh, gear.freetalklive.com and... So we were talking earlier in the show, Rich, about uh, Venezuela and the socialist government there and how it's utterly failing. Uh, We just had a discussion about Russia, and our caller was sort of pumping them up a little bit. And you made a point during the uh, during the break that there's some kind of Putin loving going on among some Americans. There is a lot of it going on, and I would and. Uh, I understand to some extent the root of it, which is Putin is saying some things about foreign policy that are absolutely correct um, and that agree with what uh, pro-liberty people have been saying for a long time. So there's, you know, a, a desire when you find some common ground with somebody to, you know, warm to that person to say maybe this person isn't so bad. No, he's still a thug. in other areas, and I'll tell you one thing that he did do to give the devil his due, is he just signed a law that uh, makes it much easier to own a private firearm in Hmm. uh, Russia. And that was very surprising to me that he did that, because it's the opposite of what you expect from a tyrant. A tyrant does not normally go out of his way to give his subjects the means to rebel against him. And so I gained some respect for him on that, but he is still a statist. He is a head of statism. Um, yeah, he's not <laughs> a good head guy. Of state. 
And I mean, it's fine to point yeah. out the, the right things when they do something yeah, right. And absolutely. That's, it's that's like fair. I give a lot of criticism to uh, police in general, and once in a while I like to point out that the Keene Police Department is has been a lot mellower than what we see in oh, yeah. on, on uh, YouTube and the police brutality stories that we read every single day. It's true. So, yeah, there, there are your generalities, but then you also have to point out when the other guy's right. And I think that's important because, especially on, on a local level, because obviously Putin is not listening and doesn't care you know, what we have to say. But on a local level, you mentioned the Keene, New Hampshire Police Department. Letting them know when they're doing the right thing, I think, is a good thing because they don't get enough feedback from people. A lot of people are just, you know, the, the stuff they tend to hear are either one side or another, all cops suck, uh, you know, maybe from somebody that they're arresting, or we love everything you do from the, you know, the cop suckers out there, so to speak. And, <laughs> the bootlickers. And I think it's important to give them honest feedback. Like, look, you know, hey, I'd appreciate it, guys, if you would stop focusing on arresting college students who have an open container of alcohol and focus more on, you know, looking for rapists or murderers, for instance. Mm-hmm. Let's let's, you know, focus the police time on things that matter, maybe people who've vandalized property or have destroyed uh, property. That's, you know, we can do things with our limited resources, even though the police are still a monopoly on protection services and they're not, because they're not mm-hmm. subject to competition, they're not as efficient as they could be. Well, still, actually, if they weren't in, in uh, enforcing any victimless crime laws, yeah. Then they would not be a monopoly because providing somebody with uh, with security services is a victimless crime. Um, <laughs> what you mean by that is they wouldn't if, be able to enforce their monopoly by force, right. Without enforcing the law against providing competing security services. No, right. What you're referring to is well, I mean, you can still form a security uh, firm, right? Like Wackenhut or one of these private security groups that you know, mm-hmm. they guard neighborhoods and malls and things like that. Um, you can do that, but you still have to ask the state for permission. If you just go ahead and form your own police department, they will see you as a competing gang and you'll be treated as such. Right. Yeah. So uh, you can share your thoughts tonight, 855-450-FREE. And let's continue with our international coverage this evening. The story, This story coming from PRI.org. And I think that's Public Radio International, but I'm not real clear on that. The story is why young North Koreans are daring to wear skinny jeans. I know this sounds unimportant, right? Like who cares that some teenagers are wearing some skinny jeans? Teenagers in New Hampshire or uh, in uh, you know the United States do this all the time. But that would mean that you well if you would come at it from that perspective that would mean you don't really know what's going on in North Korea. So, would you wear skinny jeans if they were illegal? As it turns out, the answer is yes, at least for one young North Korean woman. Denby and I are browsing through a South Korean market when she stops to admire a pair of slim-fitting pants. She declares, girls just love these back home. And by home, she means a city in far-off North Korea. She flips her hair dramatically and laughs heartily as she tries on a sparkly hair clip. She recalls, quote, we all wanted to be able to run our fingers through our hair like this like we saw in a South Korean TV show, but we couldn't because we didn't have enough shampoo in North Korea, so your fingers would just get stuck. Can you imagine? Oh, wow. Can you imagine that? It's even hard for us to fathom having hair that dirty, right? Unless you're yeah. dreadlocks and that's your intention. Uh, but, you know, the average person is used to being able to run their fingers through their hair. Can't do that in North Korea. Well, it reminds me of uh, things that my parents used to tell me about the Great Depression, uh, mm. where they they talked about literally boiling the dish rag and using it as I assume they weren't using soup on, or soap with this particular dish rag, but literally boiling a dish rag and making dish rag soup. Ugh. So, you know, oh, you're, man. because, you know, that's there's protein and fat and all sorts of stuff that gets stuck. Remnants in the dish rag. Huh? So, yeah, uh, throw it into the soup. Um, 
Dan B is a 24-year-old North Korean refugee who paints a picture of the totalitarian regime that's quite different from the one we're used to seeing, but an account supported by other defectors and those working with North Koreans. Yes, the country is rife with human rights abuses and grinding poverty. But Danby, who took on her new name after fleeing, is from a city near the Chinese border, which has become surprisingly porous. And so she's grown up in this presumably closed nation with a window to the outside world. She says she shopped in black markets with smuggled foreign goods and watched American and South Korean TV shows via smuggled USB sticks since she was a kid. Agorism for the win. Oh, yeah, dude. Th this is big in North Korea. Black markets are huge there. It's the black markets in North Korea, or the Jangmadangs, I believe, as they're called there, that basically are feeding people in wow. that country. Uh, go. Hold that thought. 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. More about smuggling and illegal genes in North Korea. It's Free Talk Live. You can join us. So you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These prevent serious blood bleeding blood events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. death. From from Zarelto 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. CopLock has quickly become the top police accountability group in the United States, and maybe even the world. With chapters across the globe, there's probably a group near you that you can join. If not, you can start your own. Besides joining a local CopLock group, you can also give just $1 a month to the CopLock network. Your contribution helps support the efforts of those who make CopLock possible. So please, join the CopLock network now at coplock.lrn.fm. That's coplock.lrn.fm. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Sylvia rated an A-plus by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop Blocker J.P. Freeman, New Mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, Longtime Political Activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Halloween costume dance party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. 
Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll free, 855 450 free. We also have Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. More about the North Korean black marketplace, uh, which is just a fascinating thing. We'll uh, tell you more about that here in moments. Also, you can join Mark, who is our normal co-host here on Free Talk Live. Tonight's his night off, but in about three weeks, he's going to be in Vegas. And if you're into Bitcoins or you want to know more about Bitcoins, then the Bitcoin Investor Conference is happening. A lot of the movers and shakers are going to be there. Mark is, of course, going to be broadcasting live. Trace Mayer, Stephanie Murphy, Tone Vase, Paul Pui, Joseph Von Perling, Bitcoin Bell. You might remember her as our co-host, Michelle Seven. She's sort of rebranded herself now. She's going to be there. Stephen Michaels and more. In fact, uh, BitcoinInvestor.com is where you can go to get your tickets. It's happening at the beautiful D Hotel in Vegas. D, by the way, takes Bitcoin. So you can pay for your room with Bitcoin. And uh, that's pretty awesome. So go to BitcoinInvestor.com. It's the first ever Bitcoin Investor Conference. Again, it's October 29th and 30th. We are three weeks away from that. So if you haven't yet started making your plans, now would be a good time to do that. BitcoinInvestor.com. Mark, will see you there. Ian and Rich in the studio tonight. Let's go to Hung Like Jesus. He is on the line via Skype. Hello, Hung. Uh, hey, uh, Ian and Rich. Hey there. Hey. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna. I just want to address the fact that you said people that wear dreadlocks wear them dirty on purpose or something like that. Uh, well, that's what I people said. People who dry who wear dreadlocks can't necessarily get their fingers uh, through their hair. I well, wouldn't they, say that. Uh, you can wash them, but you can't get them really clean, right? Well, I've been wearing dreadlocks for 20 years now. I get okay. mine really clean. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, the dirty hippies I've seen don't look like they're particularly <laughs> clean. Uh, what's What's the method that you use? Well, in between in between deep cleans, I use a dry shampoo. Mm -hmm. hmm. And what is a deep clean? How do you do a deep clean with uh, with dreadlocks? Well, I go to a salon and get ah. a deep clean because I can't because it's too you know it's just too much to do. Well, for me to do by myself. Gotcha. So I guess what what would would have been a fair and a better statement would have been there's a lot of work to keeping dreadlocks clean. Okay, there you go. That's a, <laughs> that is a much more fair statement. And would, uh, would you agree with that, sir? Oh yeah, it's definitely more work. Okay, groovy. Yeah, and it would make sense uh, that some people are more interested in cleaning their dreadlocks than others as well. So uh, I, <laughs> the yeah. people that have dreadlocks that I've encountered didn't seem too interested in that Guess, in bathing. See, <laughs> I've uh, as Having been a deadhead for a long time, I mean, everybody by the end of a festival is suffering from festival funk, mm -hmm. but most of the ones that I saw showed up clean. They just left dirty because, sure. you know, they'd been tripping and, you Not know, doing what showering. hippies do, yeah. um, you know, but uh, they're going to go home and take a shower after that. <laughs> Hung, thanks for sharing and clear, uh, clearing that up. I appreciate it. Anything else you want to get out tonight? Go ahead. No, that's all. Thank you. Thanks for the call tonight. And that's how easy it is. You can call us up on Skype. Sound great, just like he did. Skype username is lrn.fm. And let me say, because I was rousing on hippies, that I consider myself to be one of those libertarian hippies that Ayn Rand warned us all about. Yeah, I would qualify as a, <laughs> as a libertarian hippie, I think, as well. Uh, so I don't know how well it goes over if you're a hippie in North Korea. You're certainly plenty dirty, but uh, we're talking about the North Korean black market. The story from PRI.org. They're interviewing Danby. She's a 24-year-old North Korean refugee, and she's talking about the black markets where she and others shop in North Korea, which uh, feature smuggled foreign goods. She watched American and South Korean TV shows, which were brought to North Korea via smuggled USB sticks. It's illegal to watch anything besides state television in North Korea. Wow. You will be sent to a prison labor camp if you are caught 
with some of this contraband. If you're caught with a flash drive with some episodes of your favorite TV show from South Korea on it, prison camp. And if you want to understand why that is, check out The Road to Serfdom by Hayek. He explains why all socialist states eventually become totalitarian because the more controls you put on people, the more they're going to fight against those controls. Mm. And you have to somehow convince them that this is fair even when they lose. You know, and that's almost impossible. So you need a huge propaganda oh, yeah. apparatus to and keep people in line. Right. And that's why it's state TV only in North mm. Korea. And the state, of course, runs yeah. the schools and the, the radio, too. The, in North Korea, if you have a radio, it only is tuned to the state frequency. You can't you can't change the frequency on a North Korean radio. You just turn it on and off. Yeah. That's wow. it. Wow. Uh, so since she was a kid, she's been using the black market. And by the time she entered junior high, Danby says what she learned in school, that Americans can't be trusted and that South Koreans are poor. She doubted its truth because she'd been watching the TV shows from South Korea. Uh-huh. And if there's any way to see how wealthy they are in South Korea, television is going to show that crystal clear. And they are incredibly wealthy by comparison in South Korea. Oh, yeah. I mean, imagine watching Dynasty or, or you know, Dallas in in Russia. I guess, well, that kind of shows the era in yeah. which I watched a lot of TV. <laughs> Not that I watched those particular yeah. shows, but I know they <laughs> were with them, yeah. big on depicting rich people. And even if you watch Friends, the standard of living that they had on Friends being supposedly starving American workers, Much they higher. were nowhere near starving. So she started skipping <laughs> class and started smuggling goods across the now porous border. <laughs> she sold. Will you marry me, huh? She's awesome. She's cute, too. She sold North Korean mushrooms to Chinese merchants and brought back crates of rice, flour, and other goods. Now, Danby was probably a lot more daring and enterprising than your average North Korean teen, but she's part of a generation of North Korean. North Korean millennials who were kids during the country's devastating famine of the 1990s. So young people like Danby didn't look to the country's dictators to provide in the way that their parents did, nor did they respect the government's rules. She's otherwise confident and even keel, but her voice rises suddenly when asked about the country's leadership. She says sharply, quote, We see their large bellies while the rest of us are hungry. We know it's not fair. Her infe- uh, inflection slipping into a North Korean accent. I'm struck by how Danby sounds like an American teen. She questions authority and brags about skirting the country's dress codes as a teenager in North Korea. She tells me about the time she was caught by youth informants, sort of like the Hitler youth, for mm. wearing a form-fitting outfit, which had been smuggled in from the South. She says, they draw a line on the street and make you stand there while they tear at your clothes as people walk by to make an example of you. She explains that jeans were seen as a symbol of American imperialism, and girls caught wearing them would have holes punctured in them to keep them from being worn again. Hair that was too long was also cut on the spot, she says. Danby adds that if you're caught five or six times, that's when you're sent to do forced labor, unless you have the connections and the resources to pay a bribe. In North Korea, so many things can be resolved if you have enough money now, she insists. We depend on the black markets for our survival. And it was like that in Uh communist Russia, too. You know, you didn't want to stand in a bread line when you could just, you know, find it in the black market. See, what I would like to see if any foreign entity was going to intervene in what's going on in in North Korea or anywhere else in the world, don't send troops okay because right. troops are imposing your values on the people just airdrop rifles to them lots and lots of rifles and let those people decide for themselves <laughs> what they want to do with them well uh you could also airdrop information uh, as well that would be a, a less that violent too. tool but actually yeah. well eventually it's going to come down to rifles if it i probably was, will it, uh, Mao Zedong, like a stopped clock, was right twice a day. Political power flows from the barrel of yeah. a gun. Classic quote. So true. There's more about Dan B. She'll uh, tell us a little bit more about her experiences in North Korea and the black marketplace there. And you can share your thoughts with us 
at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us here on Free Talk Live. It's Ian and Rich. Currency is too important a thing to be left in the hands of government bureaucrats, especially when billions of dollars can be created with the swipe of a pen. Overstock.com supports the cryptocurrency movement because it returns the power of an inflation-proof money to the people where it belongs. Did you know that you can use Bitcoin to pay for anything Overstock.com sells while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more? If you support freedom in the cryptocurrency movement, you should support Overstock.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have